Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming along to watch this video. This is gonna be a compilation of some of the best tune videos that I've done for NECA, well done for myself, of NECA items. So today I wanna to start off with the TMNT Turtles in Disguise set. This is something that I put right back in a box, put it away, and then every time I do another tune video, it's like, I gotta take these guys out and have them fight in the posing segment. So eventually they came out, they stayed on the shelf, and now, well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the largest part of my collection. And there's tons of stuff coming along just in a few weeks even. So enjoy this marathon, sit down, relax, have some popcorn, dinner, lunch, dinner, I don't care, whatever you wanna eat or don't eat and just have me around in the background and let me be a part of the rest of your day, I guess. Anyway, thank you all so much and enjoy the episodes. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's a brand new year. We'll call this season two, why not? We've redone everything here for you to enjoy. Some little eye candy, if you will. <laughs> but today, we're gonna start off 2023 with an oldie. It says 2021 on the bottom of the box. Whatever, it's new to me, so let's get into the review. With reviews on this channel, we always start with an overview, then we look at details, articulation, and posing, and then we wrap things up with a nice overall rating. NECA, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Disguise, the four pack, and I specifically got this because I wanted the dark green turtles, which we will look at, but if you're looking at the marketing here, Donnie's a little darker, but this is the lighter color scheme, which is pretty much always the case. Even back in the 90s, the turtles always got the bright green in marketing and print stuff and uh, ornaments as well, apparently. But then the animated series was always a little bit darker, which is really interesting. And when there's four figures like this, it's a lot. Let's just get into it. So in front of the box, we got this awesome artwork that is just pulled right out of the cartoon essentially but they're at Vinny's pizza place in their disguise right this is like episode two or something of the original animated series but let's look at this packaging so when we look at the top of the box it's essentially like the top of a building but there's like garbage on it which is interesting we got this wanted ad for Shrika which I don't remember anything about we've got special introductory offer um, and then whatever this is, it's a box of something that is probably from an episode that I'm sure somebody could uh, let me know in the comments what that's supposed to be from. We've got the bottom of the box, which is pretty plain, but the important stuff, right? We've got everybody involved in packaging and figures, sculpting, paintwork, all that stuff. The side of the box, which I can't really get under this camera. So side of the box, we've got uh, What's his face from the Muckman set? We got a wanted poster and whatever that is. So on the back of the box, you got the figures actually in the photos here with their disguises on, which is pretty cool. Uh, the biggest reason why I don't didn't really want this pack is because <laughs> these faces are just kind of creepy, if anything. They kind of look like those baby masks that you can get for Halloween or whatever. But the dark green set versus the bright green figures, which again, look more like the marketing. I think the dark green looks nicer. Obviously some of the accessories that you're gonna get in the box. So this is retail value, I think was $150 or it was this price. So what you get in this pack is actually, this is a great value, you get a ton of stuff. And when you open the front of the box, it's actually a downward flap, which they've done a couple different times, but you get this nice street scene. You got some comic books and stuff. You got the manhole cover. So pretty detailed, nice cool artwork on the flap here. Pretty neat. Is this just making a really nice packaging or is there a way to utilize this thing? Do, should you just cut it off and use it as a, you know, like a, not really a, back, a backdrop. So inside the box, obviously we've got the figures themselves and then we've got all these different pizzas and all kinds of cool stuff. So because of all the glare and everything and looking at them in the pot, I can't speak. Of course, with all the glare that we get on the plastic here, plus, you know, looking at them through plastic is not nearly as fun as look at, at them outside of it. So let's take them out of the box. And inside the box, you get kind of an extension of this 
street scene. So you could use that as a backdrop on your shelf or something. Although those are some really low windows. <laughs> so in this set, we actually have like a two tier of plastic with all the accessories. So there's a lot to look at. So we're gonna try to just speed through this. Plus this is an older thing. So let's get everything out of the plastic and take a look. All right, so there you go. As you can see, it's a bit overwhelming of how much stuff you get in here. So value-wise, this is insane. Now, this is an older item, so can you still find it at retail price? I mean, probably. Just have to kind of keep an eye out, be patient, but I, I feel like you'll probably commonly see them for 200 bucks because, you know, scalpers. <laughs> but when you compare NECA for the pricing to other brands, I mean, this is insane. You get four figures, you get tons of hands, which, you know, makes sense per figure. You get extra heads, which can all be popped apart and altered with the mouths and stuff. So you have kind of endless combinations. You get a skateboard, four hats, four terrifying looking faces, a bird, book, two pizzas, a hat, a slice, a boom box, their weapons. I mean, this is insane. Definitely a good bang for the buck. A buck? The buck? It's buck? I bang for bucks. No, <laughs> that's not right. Um, all right, so let's just jump right into details. Really nice, you know, sculpt work as always. No doubt about that. It's actually on the pan, which is cool. So it's good for, you know, extra props or if you do toy photography then you're gonna love this stuff look at this one with all the extra pieces of food you get the ice cream and stuff and whatever kind of fish it is but this is generally kind of a call to some of the things the weird things that they order in the cartoon then you get this hat which is indeed weird i'm hoping that goes on a normal head not just these ugly terrifying heads we got this really detailed slice of pizza Look at that, it's actually great. I mean, this is all coming from an 80s cartoon, which, you know, isn't gonna be the best for details and stuff, but when it comes to the sculpt work and actually put putting that cartoon into 3D form, they do a fantastic job. Now, this thing is completely hollow. It's incredibly lightweight, uh, so it clearly doesn't have all 15D batteries in it, <laughs> but the detail here is really nice. You got that line work because it is from the animated stuff. And if you've seen reviews or you're familiar with some of the NECA items from the animated series, you know that they do this outline stuff all the time, which is really nice. I, I'm certainly a fan of it. Now the terrifying heads, two different sculpts repeated. Oh God, it looks like the thing from Spirited Away. Turtle heads are gonna come off. These are gonna go on place of them. These are gonna go on in place of them. The detail here, the sculpting and everything. So it is a nice looking setup, but they do this two-tone, the cell shading style thing, which I actually would prefer they don't have. Same thing with the X-Men animated series stuff, but it's some reason everybody feels obligated to do the cell shading when they're just gonna be in natural shadows because they're 3D items, right? I mean, we have all these shadows here, so is that technically where the cell shading should be? Like, it's it's silly to put it on the back or whatever. Anyway, we've got the hat, which uh, they all seem to be the exact same sculpt. There's not even an alternate design. In fact, they're so much the same sculpt that this little, like, imperfection right there is on all of the hats. These are kind of a soft rubber, so they can bend and stuff, which is nice. It's probably helpful to get them onto the heads, but you can also stack them. So when you put them away, because maybe you don't want these things, look at that. Simple. The hair and the tortoise book is essentially lifted right off the animated thing. Screen. So really nice. I mean, this, these are accessories that are <laughs> very specific to episodes and stuff. Like I don't remember this bird at all but it's here it's got a bandana on but this line is essentially endless with options and it's a danger zone for collectors because it's endless the skateboard not too bad i mean there's like a texture on the bottom which is cool they work so all you tech deck pros could probably play with this thing so the nunchucks for michelangelo looking pretty good also with that line artwork and i prefer this don't do the cell shading, just do line work like this. This is great. 
Uh, same thing with the Psy for Raphael. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I think it's just a piece of white paint that happened to hit that random piece, whatever. The swords, pretty simple. Again, the line work is where I think these things are best, but I hate that there's these little, you know, like mold, injection molding or whatever, where they're, I don't know how that works in the manufacturing process, but it's a bummer that they don't get shaved down in any way. I don't know how you would, but uh, we got the bow staff, which looks nice. Again, just the, the line work that makes it look nice, but good paint work as always with NECA. That is no doubt in my mind that their stuff is gonna look great when it comes to sculpting and painting. So we got some alternate head type. So again, you see how the cell shading happens. I That purple seems brighter than it should be. Like that looks like the proper color, doesn't it? And then that's brighter. I don't know, that's weird, but Michelangelo, there is some cell shading happening as well. You just, it's a little harder to tell with him. But these are the couple different faces you get, Leonardo and Raphael. So again, the cell shading, less obvious on Raphael, but pretty obvious on Leonardo. All these hands, I mean, there's a lot, right? So basically you're just trying to give options to every turtle. By default, they all have these gripping hands on and they also have cell shading, but it's like in a really random spot right there inside the hand. Oh, look, you've got horizontal and vertical options for the hands. As everybody let me know in my Super 7 Donatello review that these hands are meant for people with bow staffs and swords, so you can kind of point with them, but that, that feels really tight. I'm sure it'll be fine when we put it on somebody's arm. Now, you may be able to see this on camera too, but look, that one is super glossy. Now what happened? We just, the matte finish that goes on these hands just totally got missed on this one. Just a bummer. We've got the pointing hands again with the cell shading right inside at the wrist, which is so strange to me. But all these flat hands are the same thing. Cell shading, flat, uh, and then a glossy mistake. Set of thumbs up hands that we have uh, two sets of these. So four hands all together and same general layout. So Michelangelo, and the detail on these are all gonna be the same. So we'll just kind of glance through and I do wanna get these uh, jackets off of them because I don't really care to have them and I hate the pants, but it looks good. And if you like this set and you wanted the disguise, then it looks awesome. But I, I think even if I had the coat on, I would remove the pants because they're just strange, but you know, accurate to the cartoon as they should be. But the details are great. So just like we saw on the other head sculpt, you kind of have this two tone, but it's just a little harder to see on Michelangelo and the dark green just looks so good to me. It's more reminiscent of those early episodes where everything was at like nighttime running around the city and stuff. And they just had like a darker overall kind of look. So Donatello again with the two tone, I wish it was just a single color because I don't like the bright purple, although it's brighter on camera than it is in person. And same details, of course. And then we got Raphael who's looking pretty good happier in the cartoon than he is in the movies and Leonardo so they all look great I'm very pleased and the soft goods are really really fantastic so if you like the set you're gonna be really really happy with these they're a little thin which is a good thing but they're double layered so there's like actually stitching on the inside look at that and that's like almost realistic the way you would build a coat so this is They've done an excellent, excellent job on these. Let's get these coats off and see what's going on underneath. And I don't know how you do it. Um, <laughs> uh, so a little heads up. Since I was saying uh, earlier, you can actually pop all these things apart and it shows you that on the back of the box, but the lower half of their heads can be separated so you can kind of build your own uh, turtle in a sense and have like the right expression, but yeah, I was trying to take the coat off and it just pops off. Nice little preview of how that works. All right, so that actually kind of took a while to get all of those things off, but to kind of let you know, the pants have elastic and they wrap around this lower half of the, the turtles. So it actually works incredibly well. Uh, they're, built like, they're built like sweatpants, but they look like jeans. Joggers, huh. And the coats, look great. I mean, the, the quality is fantastic. It's just after touching them for a while, I have like a chalky feeling all over my fingers and I don't know <laughs> why that is. So that's a little strange, but 
they look good the pockets uh they're functional so you can put some hands in there or you can put you know maybe you want to put a little pocket pizza for later <laughs> and as far as the figures look i'm curious to know if the other versions of this like the bright green and then the dark green that didn't come with the costumes have the same lower half or if they change that for this because it seems a little odd but they i mean they look like the cartoon so that's that's good right they've done their purpose but the details without the coats and stuff on i mean they all pretty much are the same thing right it's just the difference of the, how their belts work but the shells the quality i love it i am such a fan I just wish that the two-tone coloring wasn't there because it's just, it's just weird looking. But man, these things look even better in person than they do on the screen. So wait, if you think these look good now, <laughs> boy, just wait until you have one in your hand and then you look at it. But they look great, so let's just jump into articulation. So starting at the top, we got a full rotation, obviously, no big deal, but we also have a hinge point on the bandana. So it spins around, I'm sure it pops right out, and then it has like a, a hinge point, which is really cool. That's like some extra articulation that you might not expect. And despite these hard lines here, this is just to kind of look like a cartoon, the, there's no articulation in the face. Just they separate, they come apart as we've seen before, and we will jump into that as well. But as far as looking down, that's, not too bad. You can kind of tell that there's actually articulation at the base of the neck. Uh, looking up isn't too great, but it's better than nothing. Not only can you tilt the head because the it's on some sort of peg underneath, but you can actually kind of get this like wobble thing going on. So you can get all kinds of movement out of the head. Just that the down is okay and the and the up isn't isn't too great, but you do have a lot of extra movement in there that you might not expect. Now the arms, of course, you can spin them all the way around with the exception of how close to the body you can get it because of the shell. The joints on NECA are, you know, classically pretty tight and that is no exception right here. So don't go too hard, you know, obviously you might even want to heat these things up in some really warm water, but I never do. And sometimes that causes me to break a leg on an alien figure. <laughs> But we got the T-pose, we've got full rotation here at the top of the arms, right, in the biceps area. And then we have rotation here at the forearms, or the elbow, and a nice 90 degrees. So there's only a single joint happening right here, and I think it's just because they're so skinny. Underneath the elbow pad, so it's just not gonna be more than a 90 degrees, which is a little bit of a bummer. But, the you know, it didn't screw up the sculpt, and it's a always a big part of it now the wrist of course will have a full rotation but also has 90 degrees that doesn't really seem to happen that well but you can get a little bit you just kind of have to force it but that wristband obviously is going to get in the way a little bit but it goes backwards pretty well and then of course depending on which figure you have so let's look at i think it was leonardo yeah so leonardo by default he's got the gripping hands but they are the alternate hinge point, so you get that, right? So you can actually point your swords and stuff, which everybody yelled at me for in my other review for not knowing. So on to the lower half, right? So we don't have anything that can happen in the chest just because it's physically not really possible, right? This is all soft though, which is nice. So it helps with the torso articulation. So you actually have like just above the waist where this is all moving and it feels like maybe over time it's going to get separated or something if you screw with them too much but you've got some great sideways movement because of that which is really cool it's kind of unusual uh you have a full rotation so you can actually have his legs on backwards if you wanted to look at that little turtle butt cheeks that's hilarious forward look at that he's got great ab crunch because of this so this is beyond my expectations of what can happen but as you can kind of see in there, that's a pretty huge opening from the top half to the lower half. Then their legs, let's see, you can get like a full front kick, not too bad at all actually. Nice because of that soft rubber front shell. And then the backwards is kind of as far back as you might expect. The splits, yep, you can go full splits on these guys. And they have that awesome ball joint that's going on 
and it really helps out with articulation. So you can kind of get almost any movement that you would possibly want out of legs because of that. And they're they're tight. They're not loose that we've seen with other figures. So the opposite, you know, with NECA, sometimes the joints are way too tight and then Super 7, they're way too loose. But I'd rather have them a little too tight that I know I can loosen up with some warm water. And then we've got some pins, unfortunately, in the legs. But let's see, we've got double jointed knees, which is good because it's going to really help you with articulation and posing to have a double jointed. And that's just, you know, the knee pad is a, a bit thicker, so you can kind of get away with it a little bit more than you can the arms. Let's see, is there any rotation? There's no rotation in the legs. So the only thing you get up is in the ball joint up there, so you can't rotate, which is kind of unfortunate, but I don't know if that's gonna cause any problems for posing or not. The ankles, we've got this pretty good upward. I mean, that's probably physically natural. And then great downwards. And then of course, this kind of standard rotation piece that you would get on the ankles that allow you to keep them flat footed when you have them in different poses. And then they do have holes in their feet for stands. Uh, this is, says NECA 2016. How long have they been doing this? That's weird. And I'm obviously very new to this. So let's look at how we separate the heads. So just to review back on the box, it shows you that you can mix and match all your characters. So to separate them, uh, Maybe they're, they're not all this easy, but I was able to just put my finger in there and pull them apart, which is nice. So you can actually even take the bandanas off. I don't know that you would need to, but that just kind of shows you how much these things are put together, which is pretty neat. So the bandana can also come out. And then the lower half, right? So that's what that looks like. Just, you know, pops into place. Nothing too wild, but really, cool idea and nice of them to consider that when sculpting and building these things and manufacturing them that gives the owner the buyer a lot of alternative layouts so you can have whatever face you want you can have them scared happy sad neutral smiling and open mouth happy uh, laughing whatever <laughs> I'm stupid. Endless options of what you want to do for the head. So of course, an angry brow option there and then kind of a neutral or happy brow option. So alternate heads, this is just insane. You get so much stuff. This is, uh, yeah, great value. So that's articulation. Let's get into posing. So there we go. Wow, what a fantastic set. I mean, for the price, yeah, absolutely worth it. Maybe even worth a little bit more depending on how much you love these figures. Now, when it comes to rating the turtles in disguise, I guess technically is how we're gonna have to do this, even though I don't want the disguise. Have I made that clear yet? <laughs> All right, so starting with details. Details are fantastic. I mean, the pizza details, I mean, look at that, that's insane. It's straight out of the cartoon. The colors are perfect. All the little pieces and details that they've included as extras for the accessories are fantastic. Like the soft goods for the jackets and stuff, excellent. So details are a five out of five, which brings us to articulation. Now, articulation was good. 
there were a couple things that I have a concern with, which ultimately comes down to like, you can't really look up all the way, you can't look down all the way, which isn't that bad and pretty expected pretty much all the time for everything. But the legs are kind of a bummer. I really wish there was some articulation, like a, a rotation somewhere down the leg because it does kind of limit how you can get their stance and you really gotta rely on either a stand to hold them up or getting those ankles just at the right angle so they stay flat. Because of that, I'm gonna give them a four out of five because otherwise articulation is fantastic. There's extra articulation in the neck and then the torso does way more than you would expect. Which brings us to posing. And posing, you know, when you have four figures, it's kind of endless opportunities. And if you get a dynamic stand to get these guys lifted up in the air, the possibilities are essentially endless. And I'm gonna put the posing as a five out of five. So there we go, those are the scores and the overall rating for the Turtles in Disguise. Now, if you're a fan of the animated series, obviously there's a lot of nostalgia here, but I think this was a great set and it's, an, it's a perfect alternative if you wanted the dark cartoon version versus the brighter green, because those things, those heads, I, I, I just don't want them. <laughs> like I said, they look like the big baby mask you can get for Halloween or whatever, but the jackets are nice, the hats are cool, and all the accessories you get, fantastic. But even if I just got the turtles at that price, I'd still be really happy. I think these are awesome. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments how you feel about this set. Is it something you already picked up? Because obviously this is an older set, but it's new to me. Who is your favorite turtle, by the way? Does it differ between the animated series and the movies? The personalities are a little bit different, but this is a great set and another one that you should check out because it's probably worth owning is this one right here. We did it! We managed to get one of the new figures from NECA. <laughs> Man, was it a struggle? Yes. Three stores? Yes. And none of them have a vendor, so, oh, Cora. <laughs> Three stores to finally get some stuff. I got a few things, but this was definitely on there. No accessory set yet. Mm. Maybe soon. Got a friend that made comments in the last video. Thank you. Who also happens to have the same first name as me, so Jonathan, thank you. But let's just figure out if this thing was worth the hassle, all right? He's big, he's bad, he's... A, a, a toy. <laughs> so let's jump right into it. We've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the new stuff from NECA, from the files of Pizza Squad. They always have some interesting, fun titles on there. But looking at the box, he's got this very RoboCop inspired design. And not only will you see that in his design, look at the back of the box, look at that. That is RoboCop, come on. That is <laughs> exactly what RoboCop does in a pose. But looking at the front of the box, we've got classic, turtles in their, all their multiple colors, which was, you know, how a lot of the marketing worked for the turtles, even though you can't get them in the four various colors. I really hope that they come out with a set that is like that. But on the side of the box, we've just got the same stuff. We've got a volume nine on the side, like it is a VHS, a collector's VHS cover, which is generally, I think, what the front of these are from, right? Is that right? Or am I just kind of inspired? Whatever, top of the box, turtles, bottom of the box, the good stuff to people like me who really care not only about listing what the accessories are called, and I love that there are VHS tapes here, but the bottom of the box with NECA, I love because look, I really like knowing who's involved from every step of the way from the sculpting and all of that. So thank you. Now looking at the back of the box, you've got traditional there to get a little bio about the figure. So obviously he opens up on the chest area, looking real nice. We've got maybe a new figure in the works, so we'll see. And then a couple of product shots. So looking real nice, I'm a fan already. We open the box, we've got this nice product shot on the side here, and then, what is this? Is that the portal that we're getting? And then we've got the figure itself, look at that. Oh man, I love it, but I hate plastic windows for reviews because we get glare, and that's no fun. So let's open it up and see what we got. And the sleeve on this one is just a nice backdrop of the city, which looks like diorama pieces, actual diorama pieces. Rex one looking real nice, man. I am pretty excited about this. I hate these plastic ties though. I, I hate that we went back to that. <sighs> Give me like 10 minutes and I'll be right back. Oh boy. So this is 
fantastic looking. I, I'm loving it already. And this is a style of taking a tune thing and bringing it into this 3D sculpted world that I actually really like. I love when there are the black outlines like this. So what do we have in here? Let's go over it. We have two blasters, an oil can, remote control. We have a tongue, VHS tapes, and seven interchangeable hands, plus the two that come on him by default. And then of course, Rex himself. So that's a little overview. Let's talk about the details. So not uncommon for brands to have these kind of mirrored versions of hands, but you can see all that line work looking really good. The sculpt work is nice and it's actually cut down into that top part of the hand. These flat hands, which are kind of like a halt stop hand. Again, looking really nice. Excellent paint work and the line work is fantastic. Open hands. Again, a lot of the same stuff, nothing just to different shapes, but I really like the how they worked all of these fingers, right? That's really nice instead of just being flat. And then this one, which holds a nut, which I'm sure is very specific to an episode that I definitely don't remember. Downside is you can see the white piece that is built in to the fingers to help mold that together. It's not painted gray in those little white bits, but you know, there's some little sloppy bits. It's overall good and again not really that bad when you're looking at it in person but when i shove it up the camera hole <laughs> it does look uh worse and then we've got this communicator what did i say it was called the remote control looks nice i loved all the little green bits and pieces in there that top piece looks like the green you would have on older digital items like that right you'd have like maybe black fonts or a brighter green font on top of that dark great details it all looks like it's hand done I mean, all of that looks like somebody just hand painted it. Kind of makes it sloppy sometimes, but it helps because, you know, the cartoon was hand drawn. So whatever, we're getting all those little weird things you would get in a real cartoon. So the, the blasters looking nice, uh, pretty simple, but I'm sure incredibly accurate to the show as they always do with a lot of their stuff. We got the can of oil as it clearly states. <laughs> We've got the details are just very nice. It's very simple but it works really well. We've got his tongue, which have the, has these little grooves in there. So I assume to help kind of lock it in place once you slide it into position. So we'll see what that looks like later on. And then the VHS tapes, they're all the same thing, but this whole figure is worth it just for these guys. I wonder what's on there. Episodes of what? Murder She Wrote or something? <laughs> but look at that, I love it. Oh God, it's just like all the details of an actual VHS. There's that, that nostalgia behind the tape is wonderful. And on to the thing that you're all probably really, really here for, Rex. Look at that. My God. And it's heavy. It feels top heavy, as you would expect, because of, you know, how chunky he is up there. So I hope that doesn't cause any problems with posing and uh, different articulation issues. But we're talking about details. So shut up and get into details already. So we've got awesome work around the face and stuff. But again, it, it all seems like it's really hand done. So the... The, the black outlines around the glasses are a little rough on this one, but the sculpt work and the paint work, of course, is fantastic. I'm always really, really impressed with what NECA does. The only thing I don't like about the animated stuff is just the two-tone thing that everybody does, the cell shading. You don't need to do that because it's gonna be in real natural shadow. Maybe we wanted this to be the bright blue because he's facing away, whatever. We got what we got, but it still looks good and I'm still happy about it but I love all the little detail pieces. I mean, coming from a flat animated thing, you get a lot of 3D sculpted pieces that look fantastic. So not surprised. Again, I, I think NECA really does an excellent job with this stuff. If you move his mouth down, you can see how that tongue's gonna go in there. So pretty straightforward. You can open up these panels and see so much more inside. Look at all that. That is a lot of detail that could have just been left shut and people probably would have been okay. It would be nice to have, but they put it there and I'm not gonna be mad about going the extra mile. Why would I be mad about that? I'm not a jerk. <laughs> Looking down the legs, so again, the two-tone cell shading is just black on the back and then the dark blue on the front half. But details, man, always fantastic, especially for, I mean, it's, a, it's an animated thing. How do you get this much detail? Bottom of the feet, we got peg holes. So thank you, love me some good peg holes because sometimes you just have to have them. Those are the details, let's look at articulation. So starting at the top of the head, you can turn it to the left and to the right. You can technically get it all the way around, but it it kind of wants to snap back. So there's like a little spring action going on. Not sure 
what is preventing that or what's going on in there. And then as far as looking up, uh, he doesn't. <laughs> and looking down is, is pretty good because you do want him looking down at whoever he's encountering, turtles probably. So looking down is probably more important than looking up. He's got that mouth articulation that's technically there, which is really, I think, just for the tongue. So looking at the arms, we got out into a T-pose. You can see these gigantic ball joints in here with the hinges. So you can see that these biceps are gonna rotate, which is great. And the shoulder also rotates. They're just gonna be a little tight because of the paint. You can see there's like a gloss finish going on under here. It's a little tight, but you can spin those around, which is good. Bicep swivel goes pretty much all the way around, no problem. We got a single jointed elbow, but it's very natural into the shape of this figure because he's got this you know, obviously rounded spot, but it feels like a, yeah, there's a hinge. He's getting just about 90 degrees, a little light of that maybe, and then twisting around the wrist, no problems. And then, which also feels really, really tight. And again, I'm sure just because of the paint, but you can get it, just work it a little bit. Like I've said in other videos, you need to sometimes warm these joints up. Uh, I pretty much never do with these reviews because it's all fresh out of the box. And if I break it, I should have known better. And then obviously we got the chest, which technically is articulation. We've got the torso, which rotates a little bit, but because there's a square thing here in a hole, in a circle, square in a circle, you're not gonna be able to get great range, but you can force it. So you could turn him sideways but you're kind of gonna scratch your plastic, which I'm pretty sure I just did on the inside, but it's high enough up. We've got some crunch going on that's just ever so slight down <laughs> and back. Uh, so yeah, you can see how much is going on there. And then a little bit of wobble. The legs, can he kick out? Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be just fine. So he can kick straight out and then backwards. Not too bad, pretty natural with the cheeks in the way can we do any splits wow yeah so the little blocks here that the guns are going to attach to you would think are going to prevent it but they're flexible and you can go full splits which was actually very much a surprise and you can see the joints that are going on here so full rotation around that it's just going to be the limit of whatever's touching but you could definitely move that around however you needed to so everything's just rubbing together but you can move a lot more than you might think and then the knee is a, just a standard 90 degrees, nothing special there. There's nothing rotating down the leg. We've got the foot, which goes up just a little bit and down just very ever so slightly. So not a lot of range in the legs because of that. And the, the feet technically have some kind of like swivel thing going on there, but there's a lot of limitations. They don't really do a whole lot. You can't turn them left and right, which does seem like a missed opportunity, but he's just gonna be a stiff standing guy. He's not gonna have a whole lot to, to do, I think. So to continue articulation a little bit, we'll consider putting this tongue in his mouth, which is uh, also pretty straightforward. And those ridges really help, so you can get the tongue out. And I don't remember why his tongue would come out in the show, but it does if you want it to. The guns, they have a little, they have like a little flange or whatever you wanna call that. So it's gonna lock right into the side of his holsters, I guess you could call those. So that's easy enough. The hands are just gonna pop out. They're just standard pegs, as we can see from the extras here. But all that paint does make for some of this to get a little tight. So that's it. Getting a hand on the gun is also very straightforward. Everything moves and flexes just enough. And his finger is shaped just perfectly to get onto that trigger. So nicely done. I'm a fan already. I am curious though, what this is gonna be like for posing and the overall rating of this thing. So stick around, let's see if he's worth that price. Cause that's a nasty price. <laughs> let's get into posing.
this is fantastic. I, I'm really enjoying this. This is a big figure. It's definitely the biggest, I think, out of the cartoon line, even over Toko and Razar. But, or Razar? Doesn't matter. Let's not get into that. <laughs> you can actually kind of recreate the front of the box if you wanted to. The, the hand works best upside down like that, but he can do it. He can actually hold a turtle while he's standing and he doesn't need any additional support, which is awesome. And I really appreciate the wrists that they actually, for the guns, you, you have the, uh, the vertical hinges, I guess you would say. So if you wanted to point, these things will rotate. Again, it's tight, but let me just take it out. But this wrist is different, so you can actually rotate it up and down if you needed to, which is cool. And not often the case with a lot of brands. But there we go, he's looking good. So let's get into rating him. We're gonna talk about details first. Of course, details are spectacular. And I think that I, I am willing to bet that this looks different on every single one. And I love that. I think that the the touch of like it looking and feeling like it's hand drawn and hand created is awesome. So if that is different on every single one, even better. Imperfections make this thing perfect in that sense because it feels custom in a way or like a like you've got an original piece of art in a way so details we're gonna give it a five out of five it's gorgeous of course it's perfect right I mean there's some imperfections but those imperfections make it better in my opinion because it's an animation to whatever let's get into articulation is certainly limited there's a little bit more than I would have expected I think based on images and and seeing them online and stuff the joint that's going on in the hips I am a little worried about sometimes like it starts to feel like this outer one is wrapping a little bit around that ball joint and then it gets a little tight and I'm like oh god is it gonna break so be a little careful with that section but overall Articulation, give it a three out of five. I think that's really generous and fair. There, like I said, some limitations, mostly in the legs and the, the elbows and stuff, but for what he is and how big he is, that, that's pretty solid. Posing, and posing was actually pretty fun. Uh, again, limited because of the legs, so we'll give it a three out of five on posing. It's still really fun. You can do some cool stuff with it, and he does look best in that Robocop pose. I think that's just the one you gotta go with unless you're gonna have him hold a turtle. Looking at him, man, it's honestly better in person than I thought it was gonna be. This was one that was like, oh, it's awesome, but you know, I don't, eh, whatever. But now I got him. Is he worth it? Uh, I wish he wasn't the price he is. That's a little expensive. If he was cheaper, I would say he's definitely worth it. But we're already getting into some of these like two packs that are 60 bucks, which again is actually fair. $60 for a two pack is a good price because mostly when they do a single figure, they're 32, 34 or $37, which is why this one feels a little rough to be priced at 50. So I definitely wish he was cheaper, but you know, you, you, you gotta do what you can do. And if this is a must for you, then it, yeah, I think you're gonna be happy by the end of the day when you get that thing home for 50 bucks. I just wish he was cheaper, man. Mm. So I'm gonna say, is he worth $50? If you're trying to complete the line and you're die hard or you love this character, then probably worth 50 bucks. For the rest of us, $40, 45 maybe? Come on. It's just getting a little crazy. There's not that much more plastic in, on him with the accessories and stuff that you would get from other figures where, it's, yeah, it sometimes it just doesn't make sense. He's cool, he's awesome. He's got VHS tapes in there, so maybe those are worth 10 bucks. I'd buy three VHS like that for $10. So maybe, yeah. We figured it out. <laughs> but I hope, I hope that you have success and that you can either just walk into a Target and find it. If you can't, then watch my videos about the best course of action to do that. I have a video about the Holothon and what you can expect and best practices and all this stuff. So I have videos and a whole playlist about NECA and events and stuff. So if you need something, comment below. I will help you find out that answer or send you into a direction of a video that I've already made. But I hope that you have success and you're able to get all the figures you want. And I'm sure we're all trying to get that accessory pack, which has been uh, the hardest thing to get. I haven't found that personally in any store yet. But let me know down in the comments if this is a figure that you gotta have on your shelf. And I know if you're a completionist to the series, he's obviously gonna be there and you're gonna be really happy that he is there. But if you're just trying to pick and choose some of the best items, is this one that you think you need? But if you enjoyed this review, I am asking you kindly to take the time and watch that review right there. <laughs> Don't expect anything crazy. Maybe it'll be crazy. Stick around. We'll find out. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am super pumped to be doing none other than 
the accessory set. Oh, the hardest one to find, everybody wants it, and I am so pumped to be opening this thing and be able to use like maybe 10% of it because I don't have half the figures that it belongs to with all the extra things in it. You know what? <laughs> Let's just get into it. But first, you notice my new background. Well, that was kind of you, thank you. You know what? I'll get out of the way and let you take a look. Are you done yet? Steve, come on. All right, one more second. Jeez, just learn to hit pause, boy. All right, so here we go. We've got the fantastic looking set, which is pretty much everything that's on the front of this cover, isn't it? Plus some extra stuff. So let's just get into it, man. Why do I just keep talking? Just do it. What are we doing? God, it's a review channel, not a listen to Jonathan talk channel. <laughs> So great, we got the logo, we got some awesome artwork again. Downside is you got the variant colors that were really just classic to the marketing of Ninja Turtles, the animated series, but uh, they never made figures that way. So it's true to marketing, false to reality of what you get in the box. But all these little details, we got the books under there, we got the game on there, we got the VCR, we got the baby that's a pizza, pizza monster, then all this good stuff. Stuff is good, good stuff like it. Me time. <laughs> Super Nintendo, clearly, but then these uh, weird joystick style things like an Atari. Now, top of the box, logo, warning. Mm. My cat's getting into some stuff and I don't know what it is. Stuff, where were we? Bottom of the box, that's the good stuff, man. Look at that, soak it up. Remember those names, like that one. Thank you, NECA, for doing that. Side of the box, mm -hmm. boring. <laughs> side of the box, boring, but on the other side. Back of the box, now we're getting into the good stuff. Look at that. Accessories that come for figures that we don't have, that I don't have, so that's a bummer then figures and accessories that are actually in this box. So that is good. That backpack, I do have that figure, so that's helpful. Uh, I don't have this guy, so I can't use that. And then I think there's a helmet in here. And then I do have that guy, because that's the same that guy that I have from second ago. <laughs> and then all of that, it does come included. So you have to show the stuff off, I guess, but it's a bummer that uh, if you don't have the figures, you have accessories that don't really work for the rest of them. And then the accessories include stuff that I'll forget about, so I'll read it when I do the overview. So let's open it. You ready? Looking good, looking sideways. Oh, and then, uh, you know, a lot of plastic glare, so that's no fun. Let's take this plastic off. There, that's better. Isn't that better? Look at this, I don't have Bebop or Rocksteady, so I don't get to take advantage of some of these accessories or Baxter Stockman. But I do have a little TV. Why don't I just take it out of this plastic? Why do I even, ugh. Shh. Okay, I uh, couldn't get the turtles to, whatever. You think that by being in a box, I could have put them out like the box was, but whatever, we're here, and it's kind of all over the place. But let's get into it. And how many times an episode do I say, let's get into it? So, included in the box, we have Baby Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, Big Mac, video game console, TV with interchangeable screens, cheese painting, pizza box with a pizza inside, two VHS tapes, Backpack, Ray Gun, Turtle Tracker, Star of Hoboken, Baby Pizza Monster, Rocksteady Helmet, Blowtorch, and multiple baby weapons. And if you're keeping count and listening to what this guy said, because I read the box, you'll know there's only one VHS and two Pizza Monsters. So they did that backwards. I think there are probably too many VHSs throughout all the sets, so not a big deal. This one is unique to have a yellow block on it compared to what came with Rex 1. And I don't know what the other ones were, but they exist. If anything, I think a little video game to stick in the console would be nice. But anyway, that's all the stuff. Let's look at the details. All right, so here we go with Big Mac. I love it already, but it's just everything from the animated series stuff that I, I've been in love with. As soon as I pick it up, I'm like, dang, even if it's a figure I don't really care about, like Big Mac ultimately not something I'm really here for with the 
accessory set, but it's beautiful. Details are fantastic. We'll look at articulation. Seems like he's got a little bit, but nothing too crazy, but the line work and apparently it is all hand done. So thank you to the, all of those people. And I'm sorry, because that's tedious. A uh, little VHS tape. So it's similar to what we've gotten in the past, but this one's got the little yellow block in the center, which I do like, it's just no label. This piece, which should replace the rocket or laser or whatever the heck is on top of Big Mac. So that would come off. This would go in place of it, as you can see clearly the same shape all of these pictures let's look at that so for the tv you get all of these different scenes fun stuff i dig it oh look at that that's pretty fun so just nice little things to have for backdrops on that tv but as my friend and fellow content creator mo from moscato bot collects suggested making our own and put in different games and different movies and stuff and I don't know if you can tell this, but I am a fan of the Alien and Aliens films. <laughs> so stuff like that, old video games, you know, some Mario Brothers or something, some Super Mario Brothers, since it kind of looks like a Super Nintendo. Yeah, we can just make our own and just print it out on some cardstock. So be on the lookout, follow me on social media because I will post that file and I'll make it av available to everybody. So like if, if you have Super 7 stuff and you want Moe's backdrop and bar and stuff, I'll send you the files. I drew it up myself, but you can have it. Game console. I dig it. It actually has why though. Is anybody else wondering why there's a hole in the back of this? Like they would actually have a cord. And what can we use in the real world to make that cord look like it's attached? Bottom of the TV too. There's two holes there. Hmm. So maybe they planned for it and then they were like, eh, just don't worry about it. Anyway, details, it's simple, it's basic, it's animated, so you wouldn't have a ton of details, but the fact they put these little bumps on the bottom of it, so it kind of technically sits up off of the TV or whatever you put it on, so that's cool. Um, just line work, nice little details on the back of the cartridge. I love it. And the little joysticks. So two of these fully attached, but they look good. I like the, the buttons. You can't actually play anything on it, so that's a bummer. The TV looking Fantastic, obviously you put one of those screens in there, it's gonna look even better, but look at that VCR, baby. And obviously all of us that are collecting this stuff still remember what a VCR is. <laughs> Imagine growing up where you don't even know what a DVD is. We're so old. Back of the TV, just fine details that, you know, you wouldn't really expect because it's the backside, but it's good. The books look really good, <laughs> oh baby. Love it, love it, love it. This comes out, that comes off. You could just do this if you wanted to. Just have a TV, use your VCR for something else. A little harder to use it in other places because it does have that peg in the bottom and of course on the top. So if you wanted to reuse this, maybe it gets a little tricky doing that. But nice option that you can do that in the first place. Uh, if you take this thing apart, you can slide in the film pieces back there, and then it's just got all these little peg spots, which uh, apparently causes some issues if you wanna modify this thing and put your own little light behind it. Hmm, it's a good idea. So with the TV, obviously you can actually like put the VHS in there, which is really cool, and it just... Oh. Whoa, oh, hey. Um, all right, so <laughs> I guess I'm in here now? Um, can I... Oh, there's still a me up there. Okay, so can me up there finish this review? I'm stuck. Uh, cool. So video game, we, where are we at? Where were we? What were we doing? Mouser, uh, you've probably seen it before. It's the same again, but if you missed out on it in other packs, there you go, you got an extra Mouser. So the turtle tracker, looking good, real good actually. The details on this are probably some of the best in the pack so far. Look at that, my God. It's all the wires and stuff, which are technically pliable, bendable in a, in a sense. This doesn't come out or anything. It kind of looks like it would. Nothing moves on it, but fantastic. Wow. Really good job, team. Uh, pizza, I'm sure we've seen these pizzas before somewhere, right? They always release pizza with everything over and over and over again. But I like that this box is actually on a hinge. It's a harder plastic than what we get from the movie stuff, which, you know, 
the movie stuff should be paper, or cardboard, or whatever. Um, it's got a nice texture on the inside, like there's like a matte finished thing on the inside of that. It's interesting, but looking good, of course. We got the painting of cheese, which fantastic. I'm sure it's just a screen grab or something. And then it actually has a little spot in the back so you can really hang it up, so that's nice. Star of Hoboken, pretty simple. It's a little bit transparent, but doesn't really come off that much. And it's got, there's a little bubble in there. I got an air bubble in mine. No big deal though. Didn't buy the accessory set for this either, but it looks good. We got the ray gun looking super detailed, of course. I mean, come on, man. Why would they stop the details all of a sudden, <laughs> right? All this stuff looks good. It's hand done. We got two pizza monsters, which, you know, is too, too many in my opinion. The blowtorch, which looks real nice. Again, good details. It's bendable, which is uh, important, I think. Uh, little weapons, we'll just kind of get through this quick, right? The weapons are pretty simple. They don't seem to the appropriate scale of each other, but maybe I'm wrong. The nunchucks, simple, basic, super tiny. The sword, again, basic and tiny, but they still get all the line work in there. It's like, how the heck did you do that? How did you get these tiny little lines in there? And the piece that should have come with the Bebop and Rocksteady set in the first place, uh, and apparently is a, a few years too late, but, you know, better late than never, I suppose. But for me, don't have them, whatever, who wants it? 100 bucks. <laughs> Shouldn't have said I wanted it. All right, so... <laughs> oh my God, I'm an idiot. Alternate head for Baxter, where he's got Shredder's helmet on. It looks awesome. God. Just love these details, man. The glasses. They could probably you could probably pull them out, but I don't want to do that and ruin it. I guess that's it. Just kidding. We'll talk about the turtles now. This is what we're all here for. Look at that. They're so dang cute and apparently impossible to stand or sit up. <laughs> good God, it looks so good. It's so good. And I wonder what their why their what their reasoning was. <laughs> why their what their who their huh? Who's the what's it? Why did they choose to go back to the dark green on this instead of the bright green? It seems to be the new thing for them. Uh, the bright green is kind of nice. I do prefer the dark green, so I am glad that that's what we get here. But, you know, with that space Donatello, he looks like he's the bright green, and I, I like the dark green. So what's the deal, NECA? <laughs> but, ugh, man, so tiny, so cute but they can't hold their weapons in their belts or anything, which is a little bit of a bummer. They have to either just not have them at all around them or have them in their hands. But dang it, look at that. It's so good. A little wheel baby wolf whale. I do kind of hate that his teeth aren't visible, but maybe because he's a baby, he wouldn't have any. So they don't have any teeth. They're not really smiling or, or grinning or whatever, but good God, it's, the, that's, it's worth it. How much is a set? 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Yeah, just for four turtles, it's crazy. But here we are, we did it. Oh, <laughs> I could have pretended like I already talked about this and then just went back to it, but whatever, we're here. We're looking at the backpack. How could I forget? It's like, come on, man, just get on the next thing. Get into articulation and posing, that's the fun stuff. Well, okay, fine, backpack is over. Let's get into the articulation, jeez. So Big Mac, man, what kind of articulation you got? You got some basic, I mean, you're a robot. You move like a robot. So the arms kind of move around, but they're on like a little bit of a ball hinge thing. So that's nice. That's okay. I see you, Big Mac. <laughs> What's the extra secret sauce? I'm stupid. The head, um, It's that's the articulation. It's got something in there. Oh, you can rotate it around like this. You can't really go left and right with it. Just kind of whatever. The back piece pops right off when you're trying to do articulation incorrectly. Uh, you can't bend it in any way. You can only rotate it on this back hinge connection connecty PC thing. Why are you guys watching this channel? Uh, we can take that out and make him a good boy that doesn't want to kill turtles or whatever his, his business is. How do you all remember all of these episodes? There is a right and a wrong way to put this in. That's the right way. And it looks like the coloring is off. Ew. So, yeah, a little bit of a bummer. 
So I think that's coming across on camera, but this little piece has a little bit more of a yellow finish to it than Big Mac does. So that's kind of a bummer, man. I honestly didn't even know I could zoom this lens. I am such an idiot. Uh, so we got this little body joint that does some stuff. So you can spin them all the way around. That's nice. And considering it's just a little accessory, it's, it's good to have this kind of range on him. It's totally unexpected. And then he can spin at his base, which is good, but it also comes out. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Now <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> it's a little bit different. What am I doing? Why am I wasting time? And why are you watching this? Uh, obviously the tread doesn't move. He's not a real robot, okay? So it doesn't work. We've got the Mouser, which is uh, also pretty basic. He's got some head twisting, so it's just a really basic ball joint, but it gives it exactly what this Mouser should get. And then the mouth, which opens, and you can, you can actually see some details in there. And the legs, which have multiple points of articulation, which is very surprising, and they do rotate on the sides. So this is actually really, really good as far as, you know, the articulation out of this thing was totally unexpected because I've never played with one before. Mm, played with one because these are toys, okay? Anything else that articulates that you all wanna... Oh, the turtles? Okay, yeah, good point. So the bandanas do swivel all the way around. Um, you can get them to kind of twist to different directions. Let me adjust the camera, man. What is this? My first day? So you can actually, no, I adjusted it wrong. I don't know what I'm doing here. So you can actually move the bandana around. It wiggles a little bit, so you can have it whatever direction you want. And then the head, obviously, spins all the way around. No problem. Does he look down? Quite a bit. Looks up pretty good, which is great because he's so tiny. So he's going to want to look up at other characters. And then you got this side tilt. The arms can spin all the way around and then they can come out into a T-pose, which is good, and then they do rotate at the shoulder. But there's no elbows, because that would be insane. The legs actually go out into full splits, so that's pretty cool. And then, because they're on a little tiny, little tiny little baby ball joint, they can actually spin all the way around. Again, no articulation at the joint of the knee, because, again, how could they? But they still manage to get little feet, the little feet to move. <laughs> So it goes about, that's about flat really, right? That's not up. And then they go down so that you can actually have them. Oh, that's cool. So they go down pretty well, but they don't really go up at all. At least not before you feel like you might break it. And then they do not spin. Ooh, so they're just really basic. So be careful with these tiny little, oh no, wait, look. So they do kind of do that basic ankle rotation, so that's cool. So if you're moving the legs and you need them to be flat, you might be able to twist that foot and that leg around to get the feet to be flat. But again, I hear and see now that they are probably not gonna stand very well. And then all the turtles do exactly what I just did. So replace Donatello with your favorite one, which is the wrong one. Sorry, it's not Donatello either. Which one is it? Uh, so that's articulation, which means we get into, from here, the posing segment, which will be weird, and I can do some stuff. It's gonna be fun. I don't expect anything crazy. Maybe it'll be crazy. Stick around, we'll find out. So there's the accessory pack. What a fun little set. 
Uh, again, if you don't have the other figures that some of this goes to, it's maybe not as enjoyable for you, like for me. But the stuff that I do like, like the little turtles, fantastic. So let's get into rating these guys, right? Or all of it. Details. I mean, details are wonderful. They're fantastic. I would give it a five out of five. And I will. I would and I will. And I, and I just did. <laughs> as far as articulation, I, that might not even really be a category right now because it's all super basic. We're just kind of limited to the turtles and Big Mac. But I don't know. What, a two out of five for these guys? Big Macs, maybe a three out of five. For what he is, you're getting more than you expect. But the articulation on these, obviously there's really nothing. Two out of five is probably best. So we'll, I, whatever, whatever I put on the screen, that's how we're gonna rate it. So that brings us to posing, which again, I mean, it's an accessory set. I don't even know why I would be ranking this part, but it was fun to do. So I still did it. As far as accessories go, uh, with posing. <laughs> Obviously, you need the other figures. You need the big boy turtles for the video game system to really make sense because these guys, their little hands don't grip it. And they really can't even sit down and, and pretend to play with it. So uh, it's kind of some missed opportunities with that. So uh, I guess I'm not going to rank it. So forget all the ranking. Forget it. We'll just talk the details. The only thing we need to talk about. So it's it's great. What really matters is $60. Is this set worth $60? I'm gonna say yes, based on everything that's in there. You get a lot of stuff. And if you are trying to build like a little diorama or sewer layer and all this stuff, then it's gonna be nice to have these things like the TV stuff. For anyone that doesn't have all the figures, you're not, you don't have Baxter, you don't have the Rat King, then maybe this is like a little weird. You're kind of like, ah. Is anybody just selling me the good stuff, <laughs> right? So the good stuff being the turtles, the TV, the gaming system, and maybe the backpack. And then, you know, Big Mac is good, but the, the, the base of this set really is the turtles, the TV, and the gaming system, in my opinion. So would it be worth $60 then? I don't think so. But if you want everything, then yeah, it's definitely worth it. And then these little turtles are just too cute to pass up. But yeah, they don't... You can't really do anything with them. I don't know how I'm going to display them because standing them up without some kind of like tack stuff or whatever to put on their feet, they just fall over. So putting them even here, any vibration is just going to knock them right over. But in the end, great set. Love it. If you can get a hold of one, I hope that you can. Best bet at this point, if you don't have some friends hunting for you, oops, <laughs> then target.com during the first four weeks of this month of March of 2023 and holothon.com will be your best bets to get them online. So international people, I know, it sucks, it's tough. They're gonna have to pay a lot of shipping on all this stupid crap that we all want. It's not really stupid because we want it. So we love it. It's good stuff. What's wrong with me? Anyway, love it, love the stuff, love the show, things that I do here. I couldn't do any of this stuff without all of you all. So thank you so much for coming along and <laughs> dealing with me as I seem to get weirder with every single video. So, hmm, like a couple months from now, it's gonna be strange. But thank you all. And if you enjoyed this, then please watch this one. Holothon just doesn't stop, so here we go. Today, we have Dirk Savage and Mona Lisa. Now, I believe that some of you were really, really looking forward to this set. Maybe because of Dirk Savage, voiced by Cummings, what's his name? Uh, a very famous guy, I forgot. Or you were looking forward to Mona Lisa to have a nice little date for Raphael. You wanna date your little dude to do, 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 do your toys. <laughs> Let's get into what we have going on today. So, college girl turned mutant salamander. Dirk Savage, evil dude, turned good by the end of the episode. So this is one that I actually looked up before I got into it. Mostly because I don't remember them at all. 100% out of my brain. And they have a lot of accessories that I don't know what's happening with. That's the other, that's the end of that sentence, with. So front of the box, we've got some nice artwork. And as I found out with the Bebop and Rocksteady, because on this box, look, part of his finger's missing. So I got on Twitter and wanted to reach out to Chris Rimo and see what the what the story was there. Uh, sometimes things files just get screwed up by the people putting the package together. Apparently these images are coming from Nickelodeon, Viacom and all that stuff. And then 
these folks this time travis hasback uh they're just putting the the images together on the packaging so not original art unless otherwise stated front obviously we get these plastic windows we've got some nice illustrations all of these great accessories and there's stuff hiding behind so even more stuff than what we see in the packaging now with this stuff since it's so just kind of repetitious on the packaging i guess you, you never get bios of the figures that are actually in there it's always just the same crap for the ninja turtles and then you don't get a list of what the accessories are which is a bummer because they do list accessories on other packages and i really appreciate that because sometimes you know you just don't you don't know what it's called or what the heck it is <laughs> but everything's pretty standard you get a shot of a figure on each side and then the bottom of it you've get you've get on the bottom of it, you get all of the people involved from the packaging, prototypes, director, all that stuff. And on the back of it, some nice photos of the figures and stuff from previous releases. So this was like the Fall Geek Out from last year. And then these two are actually part of the Holothon. So interesting choice bringing those two into the mix, because I'm sure a lot of people can't find those now. But this is a line that never ends. So let's open it up. And this is another one that will be going to our friend friend of the channel friend, Frosty Reviews. So thank you again. Can't wait to check these out and then send them on over to you. And the inside of this one is actually a little different, which kind of makes sense, because uh, Dirk is technically a bad guy at first, so he would maybe get the Technodrome. But look, that's pretty sweet. Nice little sewer entrance. All right, so there we go. We got everything out of the plastic. Whoops, and her extra head. <laughs> don't forget that. Now, we've got everything out of the plastic, and I don't know what everything is. We've got a chemistry set for her. We've got books. We've got extra hands. We have her in her head. These definitely look like cuffs because he hunts mutants. I don't know what this is. Is this a chemistry thing for her, or is it something to do with mutants for him? I mean, it looks more his theme, uh, I don't know. Somebody tell me, what is this? Why does this come out? Something's gotta go in there. I don't know. Anyway, you got his gun, you've got his holster, his other gun thing, and his extra hands. Now, with him, uh, cause I, I did like a little speed through in the episode, he's got a gun, I think this one, that shoots out a cable, looks like this, and he, and he captures people. Uh, so it would have been cool if he came with that. That's kind of a bummer. But I wish I knew what that was. <laughs> I didn't watch the episodes all the way through. Maybe I should have. Anyway, so here we go. We've got some great looking stuff. So let's get into the details. So I'm already a fan of this stuff because I like little bits and pieces to use for like props and to build little sets or whatever you want to do. But this, the quality is fantastic, man. <laughs> uh. I love this translucent plastics. It's just, it's working really, really well for it. Uh, obviously comes with a little stand, but you can hold it. Good if you want to do stuff with Donatello as well. These little beakers that are filled with stuff, looking real nice. I wonder if it'll stand well because it is so small. I mean, things start to get too tiny and you can't really get them to stand. But the hole is just right there at the top, so it doesn't go all the way through. But the quality of this stuff, really nice. I mean, it's so tiny. And then this has like a little bendy straw thing, so for the air to come out or whatever however science works <laughs> and look at that just another beautiful piece nicely done good chemistry sets her extra hands so she's got a couple fists because she does uh end up having to fight knock some people out and be an awesome fighter person i think she actually bests Raphael in a fight doesn't she uh her hands gripping for her beakers and books these hands, which don't have the webbing in them, which that's kind of interesting. Why why do these have the webbing in it? Is that something that just kind of activates when she needs it or whatever? <laughs> so books we've got, they do not open. Oh, it's a bummer. So if you want to get smarter, you're going to have to buy real books. You can't read these. That's physics, baby. <laughs> uh, so they look nice, good details on the pages. I was kind of surprised that they put that much work into the into that um so nice nicely done we got the cuffs i'm pretty sure right definitely got to be cuffs that look like legit you're gonna put some mutants in these things but it's nice it's bendable whatever the heck this machine is but it looks good i like the details just another contraption to have to help build up your sets 
and you gotta love that. It's that classic Ninja Turtles machinery look, and, I, and I'm here for it. Uh, so his gun, which I don't know, is this one? Is this the one that shoots the the thing, or does it shoot lasers, or does it do both? I think the red tip would make me think this is just like a laser-based one. His holster, which I guess is gonna clip onto his side here, but what's up with that? We shall see. We have this gun, which looks like a little sawed-off shotgun. You know, details, pretty standard. I love that the strap is also bendable. His hands, so he's got his uh, trigger hand, so you can do left or right hand, which is nice. Sometimes you get a uh, trigger hand, it's only on one side of the figure. But then he's got his some gripping hands to do whatever. His fists that are on him by default. But let's look at his details. So, oh, that holster goes on his back, right through that. Cool, I dig it. Stick it on there now, after we look at the details. <laughs> Dirk looking awesome, the eye patch, obviously his signature look to be menacing, but I love it. Look at this, the pads, the colors, it's just classic NECA at this point, man. Like, I, I don't think I've ever said anything bad about any of their animated stuff. It's just so good. Like, who's paying attention to these little details when putting it all together? Really, like, frame-by-frame -frame animations, I'm sure that they get, like, prototype sketches and concept art and all that to look at, as... They did with the turtle van and a bunch of people complained. It's like, well, it's the most accurate turtle van ever. No, oh, we don't like it. Okay, well, let's ruin it because now it looks dumb. It looks dumb now. It's flat topped. I hope you all are happy with what you've done. <laughs> but he looks awesome. So let's put this little gun holster thing on his back. Uh, phew, man. So all these little bits and pieces have to fall into these holes. So there's one right there. It's not glued in, which sometimes is the case with these figures. That looks like a little keyhole. So that obviously works like that. But what is up with this piece? I forgot this, it rolled off the table. <laughs> the, well, the edge of the uh, edge of the camera. This, this is like, I don't know, cattle prod kind of thing. That goes on here. Ha <laughs> ha! Only had to look it up on the internet. Now, I do want to say that the holster on the back doesn't like easily accept anything like there's not a very clear layout for this to go it's just a little too tight for anything to fit in there comfort comfortably so i'm not 100 percent sure what is supposed to go in there and and what that layout is supposed to be a little bit frustrating to be honest and you're gonna have to like probably scratch up some paint that seems uh okay <laughs> all right sometimes I'm a total idiot and I just can't figure things out. But this little strap, apparently, it was just like because of the paint, I guess, and locked in there pretty good. But it does, the strap does come undone. So you can take whatever gun that you'd want to put in there, probably this one. But yeah, there's not a clear direction. See, like how spread out that's getting by putting it in there. That's a little, uh, a little troubling trying to figure this out. So you can kind of find a sweet spot like right here where the bottom wants to lock in, but the top is too wide to make it work. And then the strap is just kind of, uh, kind of get it. Not the best build on that piece. Uh, so I don't know how I feel about it. This is the same way, it's just super wide. But once you kind of get in there and you know, he's set up and propped, it's probably gonna be fine. So anyway, let's look at her. Mona Lisa, her alternate head sculpt Nice angry face. She was a chemist. There's a college student that was trying to save the environment and the world or whatever against some, I don't know, some, some stuff. <laughs> Watch the episode, because I didn't, apparently. The other head sculpt, she's happy. Yeah, Raphael's uh, telling her, I think you got it cute. It looks good. I, I like the color. I think that her center color piece is maybe a little lighter than it was in the cartoon. Wasn't this kind of a brighter yellow? I just watched it before I started this episode. Not all the way through, just skimmed it, but that seemed more like a brighter yellow. Anyway, I think details, again, fantastic. NECA is always bringing it, it's just wonderful. And I'm really, really impressed that there's double jointed elbows on these tiny, skinny arms. Like, what? And bicep rotation. She's got way more articulation than I would have expected, how, considering how skinny she is, so that's super cool. It's like hit or miss on whenever they put that kind of work into stuff. But hey, they did it this time. So let's look at articulation. We'll start with her. So the top of the head 
Goes all the way around, even at the base of the neck, because that's what's turning technically right now. Uh, top of the head also spins around. She's just on some kind of standard ball joint, so looking down is actually pretty good. Looking up is, uh, not, not really. I mean, it moves, but then something's like forcing it back, so you can get, that's, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you can rock it just a tad. So then the arms will go up into a T-pose. You can rotate at the shoulder, of course. You can spin those things all the way around if you need to. And then you can get the biceps. And I really wouldn't be surprised if they make the human version of her, because didn't they? Didn't somebody tease or possibly that Tiffany, the girl from like one of the early episodes that dates uh, Burn or whatever his name is. So nice articulation rotation there at the bicep. The elbows are double jointed as we discussed, which work really, really well. And then they can go a little bit beyond straight down. Not that you would need it. There's no rotation down that portion, which is fine. And then the wrist, which rotates all the way around. And then you have this uh, up 90 degrees bend works real well. Anything in that belt area? Yes, so she can rotate around. You can get some bending and some very slight crunch action, but it's better than nothing, which is nice. Uh, full split, so great range. Legs spin all the way around, those kind of classic neck of ball joints. Then we have double jointed knees, which work really well. There's no rotation anywhere down the leg, just at the upper half. So a, a little bit, uh, tough but you can get the ankle to kind of twist if you need it to be flat depending on the leg position uh, but going down with the foot is like perfect and then going up is really nice and then the tail of course we can see that there's some articulation there just a standard basic ball joint but it works pretty well so the range is nice you can get some pretty cool poses out of her I'm sure and then Dirk his head goes all the way around at the base of the neck and at the top of the neck which is good. So two spots to rotate the, let's see, looking down with that big old Jay Leno chin, uh, fantastic. And looking up is really good. We've got great side to side action. So he, he works really well in the head and neck area. So shoulders go straight out. Uh, his kind of Judge Dredd shoulder pads are gonna stop his arms from getting too much action, but they are soft, so you can still get some good poses out of that. We got bicep rotation, which that's great. Double jointed elbows, love it. Thank you so much for those, uh, even if they are pins. So you can, yeah, very obviously see the pins in the arms, but you know, I'll take that for some double jointed elbows all day. We've got rotation here at the cuff, which is interesting choice. And you might as well, I guess, if you're gonna, if it's a whole different arm piece, rather than like a, a strap around the arm, this is a different piece of the arm. So then you got the rotation at the wrist and some 90 degree action on that wrist as well, which is awesome. So torso, you can see that obviously, he can spin up there, but because the shape is a little off, it's, it's gonna get a little tight. You can do some ab crunch a little bit, and some sideways, just some basic movement, nothing too crazy. And then as we saw the rotation at the waistband, it's just a flat piece. We've got the legs that will spread, classic joints, spin all the way around there, kicking forward, forgot to do that. Yeah, obviously she kicks forward, didn't even need to do that. He kicks forward, backwards just uh, right stops at the butt cheeks, pretty natural. The rotation is the, kind of the same as her, so only at the hip there, Oh, he's actually got it down there at the boot, perfect. Double jointed knees, perfect. And the classic ankle rocker thing or whatever. And does it go down? Yep, and up is about right there. So not, not too bad at all. Digging the range, they really haven't limited too many people on range in this, for all these side characters, which is great. They could have, they could have, they could have, but they didn't. Ugh. Man, sometimes this, I don't know what I'm doing here. What am I doing? I don't know. Why are you watching this channel? <laughs> All right, so on to the best part of the show for me, which takes forever, but I love it. Posing. Ha! Uh -huh. 
All right, so there we are. This thing is a foot trap. So answered my own thing. Didn't, didn't need your comment, but thanks anyway. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, it's a foot trap. So that's it. And it would have like little electric things coming out of it. So whatever, do your thing. Have some fun with it. Cool. Glad I figured it out by looking it up on the internet. This thing, also the little cork comes out. <laughs> it's like, wow, just the, <laughs> that's some great detail. Just gonna say, so if you are doing some props and photography or whatever, you can actually pop the cork out and have like some action shots pouring it, whatever. Big fan, love it. So let's talk about the details. Fantastic, classic, five out of five, no big deal. It's expected with this line, right? <laughs> you have to, and you have to agree. This stuff just always looks incredible. So that brings us to articulation. And you know what? I, these are just about perfect. The only thing I would have, want different on her is her head to go up it just doesn't and then a different head sculpt for him it's not really articulation but I, i'd want a face that looks a little more angry sometimes like you get with her so she's either happy or angry he's just always a little happy or cocky or whatever but i think i'll do it i think i'm gonna do it five out of five for both of them awesome job especially as skinny as her arms are it's just <laughs> she can do whatever you want it's awesome so that brings us to the posing segment, uh, ranking that, I guess. That was a good time. <laughs> you cannot go wrong with these figures. And obviously articulation goes pretty well with the posing. So I guess, whatever. What am I ranking? What does my ranking mean anymore? <laughs> five out of five. Which brings us to the big question. Are they worth the 59.99 or 59.00? I don't know. How do they list it? Just $59? Doesn't matter, it's 60 bucks. So, <laughs> is it worth it? Um, yeah, I think so. Pretty clear, pretty safe to say. Some of you are probably just being really selective on the line. Totally understand it. I'm the same way. I really just like, I have, I have them and the turtles and that's pretty much it right now. Maybe I'll get some other stuff. I, I'm being really selective, but for people that are interested in, the, in collecting all of it, these things are fantastic. They're perfect, so get them. 60 bucks, I know, but again, that's $30 each, which is cheaper than you can buy any single figure from NECA at this point. So cool, man. <laughs> Thanks for coming along in this ride that we call Nostalgia Unboxed. I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I don't know what's wrong with me. Sometimes I'm just like, Did, was this video any good? And here I am doing it. And I do want to say that if you like the artwork that's hanging up here, that's done by this guy. All my previous episodes in the past when I had stuff framed out, that's me. So look below this video. That's artwork you can buy from me. And you can get it in these magnets. You can get it in a 4x6 or in a big old 11x17 print. So check those out. Buy something you like. Don't just buy it because you want it. Wait. Yeah, buy it because you want it. <laughs> Don't just buy it because I said so. Buy it because you like it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you're enjoying the NECA TMNT stuff, then watch that video right there. I always tell you to watch another one. And who's doing it? Chukahachi and Lotus. Let's just get into it. We don't need low long intros where I ramble about some crap or whatever. Today, we're just gonna open up a box and look at the toys. That's why you're here in the first place. Good God. All right, so here we go. Oh, and sorry about the mess. I was playing some games earlier and I, you know, trying to run over hurdles and things and I needed some cheat codes. Don't worry about it. That's out of the way. Those downloads will be available soon. <laughs> a little shameless self-plug. Sometimes you just gotta plug yourself. Chunkahachi and Lotus, where were we? So we got some artwork on the front of the box which comes directly from Nickelodeon and Viacom and all those people. And then it gets handed off to somebody. This time, Travis Hasback. He also did 
Who was it? Who did I just do a review of? Um, two people in a pack. Oh boy. You know what? I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Classic NECA fashion. We get this big open window and some illustrations. Top of the box. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. A nice shot of the figure. So I know he's supposed to hold a flame. I think he's a ghost of some sort. And she has got her lotus flower. Fitting for the name, right? Bottom of the box, we got all these people, like we mentioned, Travis, who put the packaging together, found these images, and then uh, all these people. Mm, well, we see a lot of these names, right? Like those names? And then the back of it, looking at that. Um, yeah, I dig it. That's a pretty sweet move you got there, Chakahachi. Man, cool. Also, an older wave item that was from the Fall Geek Out. And then, so was that. That's who I just reviewed. <laughs> Thank you for putting that on the back of the box so I could remember what is wrong with my head. Let's open it up. Whooshing! That was not made with my mouth. That was a real sound effect from a blade. Isn't that cool? And the background is just a Technodrome, which I believe these are both bad guys. Is that the case? That's what that tells me is happening, but I thought she has a love interest with Leonardo or something. You know how it goes. Turtles and humans, man, they love to have some kind of relationship. And it's not weird at all, is it? It's real weird. Give me a minute. Give me one minute. And after these messages, I'll be right back. All right, there we go. We got everything out of the box. Uh, tiny little arrows and tiny little hands. It's never, ever an issue. Nobody ever loses that stuff. I need to find some kind of tackle box or something. This stuff is starting to get a little crazy. What do we have? So we've got this nose on a vacuum cleaner for sniffing out, um, I don't know, ghosts? Who knows? What is that thing? Somebody else watched the show. There's a comment down below and they tell us all about what this stuff is. Cause this idiot is just opening it up to look at it. So we got an arrow, we got a bow, we've got the sheath and the sword, the lotus flower and an extra head two gripping hands uh, with tiny little holes in them, tiny little baby holes. Uh, and then what is this? These are kind of, I don't know, some other kind of gripping hands. For swords? These are tiny, whatever. <laughs> then we got these fireballs, these ghostly fireballs would look real cool. They got some extra little bits of paint or something going on in there. Then we've got his sword and sheath, his smaller sword. A dagger, I guess you could call it. I should know what these are called. These are Japanese. They are, you know, whatever. Open hands and gripping hands and then fists by default. Open hands for her by default. Uh, they look great. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. They look real good, but her mouth, the line underneath of her, well, whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that in the details. So let's start with the nose sniffing thing. Classic NECA technology stuff where it's just like buttons and shapes and vents and it's just super cool. I, I love this kind of uh, the, the whole style of what computers and technology should look like. Machines or whatever. Uh, this doesn't really bend or anything, so it just kind of is. The bow and arrow, which look nice. It's simple, but you know NECA does do this real string action, which is awesome. And you know, I hope that doesn't break. I'm sure it will kind of get loose over time because it's, it's pretty tight, pretty tight setup. They also put the little uh, slots in the arrows so that they will lock into place, which is really nice. So you can get these things to be in a nice action pose. The Lotus Flower really just comes out of paintwork. So no black outlines on this, which I think is pretty interesting and probably taken right from the cartoon. Maybe that was something they, they kept simple in the cartoon, but look at that. You can actually see textures in all of this, in the petals and the flower and stuff. So this is a really nice way to, oh, hi cat. This is a really nice way to bring <laughs> a uh, item like this. Come on, give me a hand. <laughs> we got the sword and sheath for her, for Lotus. Looking nice. I love the details and the handle. Look at that. Hilts and stuff and words that are used specifically for swords. I don't know them. We are just collectors. We're not sword experts. Uh-oh, okay. That was a little tight. 
Well, I was afraid that wasn't gonna go in. We have her extra head sculpt, which is with the mask and hood up, looking pretty cool. Um, come on, those aren't for cats. <laughs> You're making this a little hard to do, Cora. So we've got the hands with the little tiny holes in them for glipping, glipping. That is when you grip and lick at the same time. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the old grip, grip and lick, shut up. So these are probably just gonna hold the lotus flower, I'd assume that's probably all you can get in those tiny little hands. Do we, do we, do we have these hands? Uh, which I guess is for holding the bow, probably, right? Yeah, and it's gotta be able to hold the sword as well, and then you just kinda get this nice pointing action by default. But, there we go, looking nice. There's a, I mean, the paint's not perfect, but that is super, super small. My God, yeah, how do you really get in there? Anyway, these little fireballs, let's look at these things. That looks pretty sweet. I love the little extra bits of paint in there to give this thing some life and texture. Super cool. I wish there was more of it, to be honest. And this one, which we saw on the uh, side of the box or whatever, where it looks like he can hold this in, in his hand. It's pretty sweet. And this one, which wraps around the arm. And I think these are gonna give some opportunities for other figures. I mean, if you're doing pho photography and stuff with your figures, that's kind of stuff you could give to just about anybody. Uh, his sword is very similar, but just, you know, like some different colors, different textures uh, for the for the wrap around the blade. And then there's this hole in here, which makes you really want to put something on it to like hang and dangle off of it, like a little chain of some sort. That's pretty cool. And the small one, even more simple, it's just a black with a little bit of paint. There is a right and wrong way to put that in there. The extra hands, sculpting, of course, is great. I love that there's like actual lines in his palms. Who can read palms? Tell us about his lifeline and stuff. Well, he's already dead. So you're not good at it, are you? Mm -mm. You were like, oh, he's going to live. No, he's already dead. His lifeline is he's dead. How about that for palm reading? Then we've got some nice textures here going on for the knuckles. We can see his fingernails, I love it. And the gripping hands for his swords. Again, same setup. Looking really, really nice. Of course, he's got these pull, pull strings, and when you pull them, he says stuff, which is really cool. So here. I am fellow Isn't that cool? What's this other one do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, that's cool. I love that they added that in. Shoulder armor looking nice. It's on a hinge, so you can articulate without worrying about that thing, which is really nice. And then just the textures and colors. Uh, and by textures, I mean there aren't any. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, so the colors look really, really nice. And then the sculpt works. So like the wrinkles and everything that are going on there. I love it. I love the face. Look at those eyes, man. So cool. So cool. So then he's got the two-tone, the cell shading going on on the back side, which we, it's kind of been hit or miss in this line. And I'm sure for good reason, but not everybody like the lizard body for the grunt doesn't have any at all, which is really strange. Looks good. I, I definitely prefer these things without it. Although, I don't know, it, it's grown on me over time. So maybe it's okay. Somebody pointed out that you're getting a lot more paint for your money too when they do this. They just, not only is it this red, but now they got to do this red and this brown and this green. So yeah, they don't skimp out when they really could have. I mean, that guy could have just Spent way less money on these, but you always get more for your money with NECA. So what I think is a little weird looking here is that underline on her bottom lip. It kind of makes it look like her mouth is open and then their tongue is just skin colored and sticking out. It's hard to unsee that, but that is just a lip underline. Otherwise, sculpting looks really good. The hair looks pretty sweet. It's just a big solid piece and then this little dangly section, but it looks good. I like this. I like that there's like the, the extra bits here to really give it that, uh, you know, it looks like an animated hair style thing. We've got her gi, I guess. Also two tones, so she's got like a black on the back half of her, which definitely helps her out in ninja form. Can't see her, she's just gonna blend into the shadows, but then boom, now she's got some grays and blacks. Looks really good. Uh, again, it's just kind of classic with NECA to have nice textures and stuff and sculpts the details in here in the fabric, which, you know, if it's an animated thing, is usually just a, a flat line. But I love it. Really, really nice. And she is tiny. So let's get into articulation. We'll start with the top of this guy. 
Look at that head, looking awesome. So angry, and I kind of wish there was an alternate head sculpt for him, but I don't know. Maybe that's kind of his whole jam. I don't, I don't remember his his character. I I believe he's supposed to be like really really tall, because he's a ghost. He can kind of do all that. But the head spins all the way around, kind of at an angle when it spins. Nope, it's just a big. <sighs> I'm gonna do that again. <sighs> so the head spins all the way around, no problem, which is good. And if he's a ghost, then it makes sense for him to do weird stuff like that. But it tilts to the side really well. Does it look down? Not too bad on the down. And up is just slightly, which, you know, I guess that's fine. Uh, there's a little bit of imperfection extra plastic you can see in here, but I'm sure if you had like some tweezers or a sharp little uh, knife, you could just trim that piece off, no problem. On to the next section. What? This is all kind of soft in here, so I imagine he's got some torso articulation. But the arms, thanks to this little piece having a hinge, you can get both arms up into a T pose. You can spin them around. Yes, this is all soft up here as well. And then the shoulders are on that kind of traditional ball joint that NECA seems to do. And then you've got bicep rotation here at this colored area. Uh, it happens on both sides, which is nice. And then obviously there is gonna be some limitation over here. Just gotta be careful with that. Obviously do not wanna break that thing off. That would be bad. The elbows are double jointed. So thank you very much. I love me a good double jointed elbow. Ugh. And I will, I'll happily take some, uh, pins if, if that's what it means to have a double jointed elbow you just get such better articulation um, really makes for a better character and then the uh, rest of the arm you got the wrist which will spin no problem and then it's got a 90 degree hinge on it but uh, I think there's gonna be some limitations here but not too bad honestly I kind of th thought these things would get in the way even more I mean they are soft so technically they're kind of getting pushed out of the way so you're just gonna have to be a little careful and see what you can get out of it, but not too bad. Let's see, he's got some waist articulation. These are separate pieces here at the belt line, so you can spin them around. It's It seems to have some struggle there, like it's on a, like it, it wants to snap back, like whatever's in the way in there, but it, it still works really well. Let's see what he's got as far as ab crunch is <laughs> way, way better than I thought he would get. Wow. Uh, not so much backwards, but the front is fantastic. And of course with that you can go side to side. So excellent job. I'm very impressed with that. So the fabric here is going to get in the way of the legs. So he can't, you can get the legs to move, but this is going to push them back down. Not that everybody's doing splits, but it's nice to know what kind of range you can get for different dynamic poses. Maybe he's jumping in the air and kicking and you need to get that leg up, but you, but you won't be able to, not with him. These aren't split into different sections, which it's kind of weird. If they were, you would definitely be able to get more range out of it. But you can see in there, that's just kind of the standard joints that NECA has been using. It's kind of on a ball joint. See the knees, double jointed, but I don't. you're not gonna get much at all because of his pants and his boot cuff or lower pant cuff, because it's not a boot. Certainly dealing with some limitations there. They do rotate, which is nice, so you could probably get some more range if you get this stuff out of the way. Well, you just gotta play around, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's not too bad, but certainly limited. The ankle spins right here at the bottom section of the pants, and you can see this joint in here, so that means the ankle should also rotate, but you can go straight down, which is awesome, and up is fantastic as far as the the rotations it's gonna be that standard ankle that you get on pretty much any brand it seems these days so articulation is really fantastic very very surprised all right so lotus how well can you look around actually you fan <laughs> that's also really really good so not bad at all we've got some great head tilt to the side can she look down, uh, pretty much straight down, and then up is obviously gonna be super limited, and you're gonna kinda work with the waist to allow her to look up, because while it looks like she's looking up, uh, it's, really, it's really the waist that's doing the work there. The head can't go that far because of the hair, obviously. But it is kind of like a double neck joint thing, which is cool. So you get the one here into the chest that is doing a lot of the work. The arms can go out to a T-pose, no problem. Rotate at the shoulders. Uh, there's no bicep rotation, but she has that kind of 
double jointed elbow thing we've seen before, like the movie Casey Jones and stuff. So um, it's skinnier here, but it, it seems to work really well visually. It doesn't get lost in that, like the fabric folds look pretty cool. But double jointed elbows on a figure this skinny is really, really nice. We have rotation at both sections of the elbow. So the, no bicep, but you get two sections here, plus the wrist and 90 degrees on that as well, which is awesome. Now, as far as any torso stuff, she's got really at the bottom of the belt, she's gonna rotate and crunch action. Yeah, she can bend forward pretty well and backwards pretty well. The side to side didn't really exist though, which is a little bit of a bummer. The legs, let's see, she can go into a full split. She's got the classic joints here. They can spin, rotate there at the hip. And then the next thing down is gonna be double jointed knees. Thank you so much. And rotation, no, nothing right here, which you would expect. Even though she's a ninja, she should have all kinds of articulation, but straight down on the foot, up pretty well. Uh, and then the classic kind of rocker things, whatever you call these. I need to learn these terms so I don't sound more like an idiot. I know I'm idiot levels are right here, normal person. I just don't wanna be like any lower. I can't afford it. So not too bad. Let's see as far as uh, putting weapons and things in. So we saw on her back, you got this thing and you'll slide that sword right in. And once that is in there, you're gonna have a lot more limitations of her head. <laughs> she kinda she kind of gets stuck looking in a particular way because of the sword being in there. So you'd have to have her looking off to the side a lot, remove the sword, push the sheath even further down, I guess. I don't know. There's No, you can only go so far because that piece of plastic is blocking it. So that's as far in as the sword can go. Um, so yeah, that limits her a lot by having that in. Like obviously you can change the head, but I don't think I would. I think her unmasked is definitely cooler looking. Plus look, her hood, this doesn't come off. This is her hood with this head. So it's like relaxed and like pulled off of her head. So when you put this one on, uh, it, it's still there. So that is this, but off. <laughs> so that's kind of a weird, Oh, that's weird, but it looks cool even with the mask thing So if you are doing some different dynamic poses or whatever you got a, her fighting then she's gonna look cooler with that right? She's in fighting mode uh, Just like Megatron is her face shield is up <laughs> So he doesn't have a face or anything to, to change out, but he's got hands his swords are gonna go into these uh, just to let you know, these are not zip tight. These are actually built into it. They're not pull strings. He doesn't say anything. I know it's funny that I got you though. You were like, oh wow, can't wait to get that. It doesn't have that. So I would say definitely go from this open end first because you don't want to overstretch this thing too much. There we go, his sword number one. So there we go, swords are in. He's looking pretty sweet, ready for some action. Uh, so that's when we get into posing. So there we go, we've got Chakahachi and Lotus, and they're pretty sweet, I love their looks, and you know, they work really well by themselves, even if you don't collect Ninja Turtles, but you want some nice Japanese-inspired figures, a ninja and a samurai ghost, cool, I love it. So what do you need to know about these things? So the details, fantastic, five out of five, that's always the case with these, no question, so 
articulation was hmm better in some parts on her better in some parts on him but i wish she, that these the bottom half was cut so you could get some more leg articulation because he's certainly limited now her you can get more than maybe i would have expected because she doesn't have any rotation down the leg but the hips work really well for rotation so four out of five for her three out of five for him, which brings us to posing. And you can have a lot of fun, ultimately posing. You just gotta get him in some awesome looking, kind of ready to fight samurai, classic samurai pose. Her, you can do a lot of stuff. She's got kind of a lot more opportunities because of her legs uh, than what he does. Posing will give it a five out of five. Overall, these are great. So the real question is, are they worth it? 60 bucks? Yeah, obviously. I think you knew that going into it. 60 bucks, they're $30 each, it's perfect. So, since these are done, and I don't have anything else to review currently, for you to watch, right after this, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming around and watching this video. The next thing that you can do is watch that one. Oh man, we got her, we've got that April O'Neil that everybody's sticking their neck out for. <laughs> because of her long neck. But it doesn't look as bad in person. Looks kind of bad in that photo, but it looks okay here. But let's open it up and see if that really is a big deal. But first, we need to look at the front of the box. Look at that. That's some classic cartoon VHS style. And we're all here for it, right? Sometimes you want to keep the box because that is pretty neat. And then you got the stuff and the other things. Nobody really cares about this right now because we just want to get it out of the box. But we actually have a bio about her instead of a bio about the turtles, which is usually on the back of a lot of these things. Then you got her in that weird contraption. Then you got her with that. You got her with this. And look at that. Is that her grandma or whoever? Oh boy, that might be a tease. And then the bottom, look, we need to say thank you. Not only because they put a list of all of the ingre uh, ingredients. I call these ingredients now. <laughs> But now, look, all these people, thank you so much. And then the prototypes from Roger Fernandez. But the sculpt, Tomas, he redid the head. So thanks to him. I'm pretty sure, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> so of course, a, a, a figure of the fought, and then we got a figure and all of these extra bits and pieces. But some of us have never had a freaking April O'Neil other than the cat one. So this is a big moment, okay? And I do want to say something to Mad Hatter. Ooh, I got it way before you, dude. So good luck with your fake AliExpress stuff. But I got a real one straight from Target. <laughs> I mean, I I had to drive around to like three Targets, and 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 then finally I found it. But you know, I still got it before you, and that's a, that's a good thing. You know, you're sitting at home saving gas, relaxing, or whatever. But I had to go and drive around. No big deal. But I found her. <laughs> all right. And I also want to thank TMNT for me, which does that kind of sounds like all of us, doesn't it? For letting me do some reviews and send some figures back to you. All right, so in there we got this sleeve, which we've seen before and we don't care about it. Go bye bye. Bye. Now we're talking, baby. We've got that April O'Neil in all of her glory. Look at that. And it's a different color yellow, I think. Is she going to be worth 37 bucks or 36.99? You like to save pennies. Now's the time. Take that plastic off. Take that plastic up because I forgot to snip that piece. <laughs> so sometimes when I just go crazy and dump them out, I stuff goes flying off the desk because I'm an idiot. So I need to do this manually. All right, we've got her out of the box. We've got all our little bits and pieces and all these things that honestly I don't need. I don't really care about any of this stuff except for this. Gotta have the bondage head. I mean, the uh, blindfolded head, normal one. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. This, this definitely don't care. I have too many of those things. The picture, that's fun. I guess it's cute. This, I don't remember the episode, but it's cute. It's fun. Let me just do this the right way. <laughs> I'm so wired. Let's take a look at her accessories. So we've got this contraption from an episode of something, okay? And it works like this. You just, you just pull it apart. Easy peasy, baby. Uh, some would say a little too easy, but there's like a, it, it kind of locks it, so that's nice. This, which is actually like some pliable leaves from whatever episode that also I don't know. This I just recently watched and I know that the, the mob bosses were going after it and Shredder and all those people, I, it, whatever the point of this one was. This book, which we also don't need, where did this come from? Accessory pack, as well as 
in disguise? I don't know, doesn't matter. How many books do you really need? Then we got the plant, which is also pliable. So that's kind of cool. It's not like a bendy wire, so you can't keep it in any particular shape, but at least it's not gonna snap off until you touch it too much. Photo, look at that. It's a little uh, dingy looking, and I'm sure that's very much on purpose. And the back of it, of course, pretty basic, but nicely done. And it's always a render. Why is it always a render when they do these photos? Is it because they're gonna make them at some point? I, I think so. And then Pisa, Pisa, Pisa Monster. Yeah, no, but we don't need this guy, come on. We've got the camcorder. This is an accessory that you definitely have to have. Come on. So thank you for putting that in the box because this is uh, too cool for school. <laughs> I don't know. I'm clearly not cool. Recording device with the microphone and it's attached, which is nice. I love that. So you get this, uh, you know, the good looking stuff, the details, the pieces, the things. You got a microphone by itself with a channel six, six. <laughs> and you've got her turtle communicator, which looks like this. And it opens y'all, check that out if I can do it. There we go, we got it open, so there you go. I kind of wish that one of the turtles were painted in or glued into that little screen, but no big deal. I like that it's functioning. Now she can pretend like she's just touching up her makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid. We've got this alternate head, which is just a nice little smile. And you know, some people, let's fix the camera. We gotta do that. Some people thought that the eyes would steal, steal, God bless. My Southern roots still come out sometimes. Looking at that head, some people said that the eyes might still be a problem, but no, nope, they look fantastic. The details are wonderful. They're actually sculpted uh, eyelashes, which is really interesting. Very nicely done. I don't have the other April to really compare, uh, but I've seen enough pictures to know I hate the original one. A little bit of uh, over, overdoing it on the paint on the uh, the bottom lip there it looks a little big but this is clearly from some episode that I also don't know I think that maybe this is my April that has a problem based on these other heads which this is a real bummer notice how shiny the one on the right is you can kind of tell in the hair but the face the face has a lot more gloss to it even her uh, neck her decollete deg Deglatage? Decollete? I don't remember. <laughs> but the arm is a little bit shiny. It's not coming across too much in the camera here, but her face, yeah, this face is certainly a little bit more gloss than the one on the left, which is a little bit of a bummer, man. Hmm, whatever. Still happy man. We've got these hands, which are flat, so that you can have flat hands for doing flat poses. Then you got these, because she can be a cute little Japanese girl if you want her to be. Kawaii. Ha <laughs> ha. Then we've got these pointing fingers so she can say over there and over there. Or she can, if you got the other April, you can do the Spider-Man thing where she's pointing at herself. That's a cool idea. Then you got these thumbs up hands cause everything's A-OK -okay, or it's not, uh-oh. <laughs> kind of semi just relaxed hands, I guess you could say, just for a little natural pose. And then you got the grippy hands, which you're definitely gonna need cause she's got a lot of accessories, but you gotta hold the microphone, you gotta hold the other things and the stuff with it and that's how you're gonna do it. Who would've thought? And since this is an April episode, check it out. We got April shirts that I made. Yeah, that's right, I got this one, and I, I got a couple variants. I got a green bomb instead of an orange one. I don't need to show you, because I'm gonna put it on the screen. I got her with a green bomb on the front, and then I have this one, which is available, where she's on the back, and it's got a nice little, go get them, boys. It looks like an old warplane thing. Isn't that fun? All right, back to the show. Finally, take a good old look at this April O'Neill. So she's got a new collar, she's got a new neck, but look, the details are there. Certainly, certainly better than the other one, okay? This is much, much needed release. Not only because it looks better, but also because I didn't have one and Daddy Nostalgia wanted one. Now, I wonder if her torso is gonna end up getting loose like my, the Catwoman version. Oh, yeah, probably. There's a little bit of wobble in there. So I would be careful with that and expect that to be an issue. Now she's got double jointed elbows, which is really interesting. I honestly, did she have them before? So the yellow, as you can see, is very much different from the Catwoman one at least, which I assume is probably exactly the same 
as the original release. The back looks a little bit similar because they use that two-tone paint, but it is still darker on the new one. And this just has a better overall color. It's more like a school bus yellow, I guess, than this is more highlighter if you're gonna try to describe them a little bit. But this has a great matte finish. This one, not so much. Hmm, that's, that's a little bit of a bummer, but she does have double, double jointed elbows previously and still. And she's pretty much the exact same figure from the neck down. I don't think so, actually. The whole torso is new. Sleeves look the same. So it really comes down to the torso section. So this is just overall redone in a lot of different ways. It is bigger also in a lot of different ways. Mmm, that's a weird attention to detail, Mr. Sculpty Boy. <laughs> but overall, it's a better figure, no doubt, okay? It's substantially better. I am happy to have one, finally wrapping up the much needed line of figures, except for I don't have a splinter. And I don't have a Casey Jones. And I don't have a Shredder. Okay, I still have a lot of stuff to get, but for the core good guys and girls, we're set. But I'm super happy, this thing is fantastic. And yes, you need to get one. And you know what, Mad Hatter, I, I just wanna say earlier, Hatter, that when I said those things, I, I didn't mean them. That was really mean, and I'm so sorry. Anyway, <laughs> back to it. This is absolutely an improvement. 37 bucks, is it worth it? Yes, duh, obviously. I think if, if some people were spending hundreds of dollars to get the last one, so obviously, if it's costs less and looks better, it's definitely worth it. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. And in the meantime, look, just watch that video. Why not? I mean, come on, we're all turtle people and that's, that's a good one. That's why I'm saying to watch it. If you love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles then you're definitely gonna love frogs. That doesn't make sense, but today I think we might. Look at this big old box. What is gonna be in this big old box, but a big old frog. And it's pretty obvious because you saw the thumbnail and you figured that's probably what I was reviewing anyway. <laughs> Colossus of the Swamps. So we got a nice VHS style cover. We've got obviously some more variants of these two. I mean, come on, I think enough is enough. You don't need any more of that, but to confirm, look, you see these two, and on the back of that, another drawing. It's definitely gonna happen. It would be crazy if they didn't do these fun spring break vacation Bebop and Rocksteady. Anyway, when is that gonna be? Is that even, is that might even be the box. I don't know, I haven't opened it yet. But look at this, big old froggy boy. All the people involved, look at these people. Congratulations, you guys rock. Brody, that's a name you see a lot. May, I, that's a new name for me. Let's flip it open. There's an image. That's a real thing. Wow. <laughs> so there you go. You get a nice shot of the figure in action, but you get that classic plastic window, which is really, really fun on channels because of all the glare. So let's just open it up and stop looking at it in the box and talking about the box. We're not here for the box. Sorry to the inbox collectors, okay? I know that's all you guys care about. They don't even need to have figures inside because you just, you're collecting boxes and it's so strange to me. So weird. In box collectors, I'll never understand it. I just want the box. Weird. And then of course with packages, we don't need them. Inside you get a sleeve that doesn't match the theme of this. I thought for sure it'd be like a beachy sandy background, but it's just a picture of their street diorama. That's boring. On to the good stuff though. That boy, look at him. Do I need to adjust the camera? Do I need to adjust the camera? A little bit brighter. This is one of the biggest figures they've made, hands down, without a doubt. Probably the big Chrome Dome dude. What's his name? Chrome Dome? <laughs> I think that's his name, isn't it? And then you got this one, Rex One, also very big. This is a gigantic, heavy, piece of plastic, this is way bigger than 
Rex One. Let's find out. I forgot how much it was. $54.99. That's a hefty price for a hefty boy, but I think that's probably justified. Let's take it out of the plastic and then look at it more. Oh my goodness. So he is so heavy duty. He's actually got some twist ties, not just these clear things. Goodness sakes, this is a beast. Consider subscribing. That button is there because it wants you to come back and watch my videos. And you know what? The, the truth is, I want it too. <laughs> I actually want you all to continue watching my stuff and not just watch a one-off video. I'm trying real hard here. All right, Napoleon Bonafranc, the big boy, he's got an extra head and he's got two extra tiny heads that you can replace. No, it's not for that one. It's for the figures that came before him, the regular size ones. You get a couple extra head sculpts. That's actually pretty sweet. Huh. Well, now that is a little unexpected. A nice little pleasant surprise for anybody that does have the frogs prior to this. That's pretty neat. How many times am I gonna say that? Hey, pretty neat. <laughs> Say it again. Accessories. He's got a couple gripping hands. He's got this punching hands, and then these kind of open, palmed, relaxing, gripping in someone's face hand, whatever you want to do. And then this big, unsightly seam that's going to be fine because it's inside the body. So don't worry about that, even though it looks really off putting right here. I think it's going to be fine on the body. So looking at the details of this, I mean, fantastic, right? If you're gonna work something this large, then the details are definitely gonna be there because you got plenty of room to do it. You can actually kind of see where there was a seam going down the front and back, but they did a really good job of blending that in for the most part. I mean, there's a little bit of slightliness when we go, what do we say, people? When we shove it up the camera hole. <laughs> That's right. Then you can really see details that normally you wouldn't with your naked eye or care about as much. You need some uh, some good eye cream there to help with that, uh, the darkness, the dark circles. He needs uh, maybe a coffee or something to wake up. And as you can see, two-tone colors, classic with NECA. And then a sweet gun, which is not some liquid in there, which would have been incredible if somehow they got some liquid to just kind of slush around in there. But it's only a half thing. So that's the only thing out of all of this so far that I have a problem with is that it, it doesn't have a top on it. So it looks a little strange. Anyway, the gun is nice otherwise. It's very detailed as usual, the good sculpt. Uh, it's pretty simple on the sculpt ultimately, but the details are there in the paint and the black outlines as always, I love it. Now let's get into the big old beefy boy himself. He's got some mouth articulation, look at that. There's not a lot of range. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so maybe a little easier with the head off. We'll just go with it. So there is some slight articulation. You can see the tongue is there. And you get some movement. There's really not a lot of range, which is kind of interesting. It's like you'd, you'd go through the effort of allowing some articulation, but then not having a whole lot of it. Was it worth your effort? He's got a little bit of a messy eye on this side from the hand painted work, but that's okay. It's a small misstep in a hand painted thing. It's gonna happen, okay? Don't get so angry. That's why you open your windows and you look at them before you buy them. Oops, I <laughs> didn't do that. Here's the body. Look at this. Without that head in the way, distracting us because of his beautiful froggy face. But this is all sculpted in as far as the necklace goes. You get a little tiny ball joint in there. That's actually a pretty standard size from what they normally put in stuff, which is interesting. So I think if I am not mistaken, well, you can't get it to pop on, but you can put it in place. And that is now my new favorite way to do this. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. Shirt can actually, I'm sure you could probably wiggle this thing off if you could pop an arm off or something, but the shirt is actually a totally separate piece. It's not attached to them, which is really nice. So the paintwork and all that stuff, all the details are still there. Excellent job as always, boys and girls of NECA. Good job and all of the labor in China doing this by hand. I hope the working conditions are okay. And while I'm working on this review, I, listen, you know, I gotta say something Mad Hatter again, because of his last video, he went on about stuff and just like, you know what? I, so dude, 
You're gonna just literally copy like 50% of your video is my content. Here is an impression of you. Hey, my name is Jonathan from the Stops Unboxed. I'm all awkward. <laughs> quick edit. Quirky, quirky, quirky. The quick edit again. Who sound? Now here's a split screen on a wooden background. <laughs> wooden background. I said wood. <laughs> I hate myself. Here are my hands. <laughs> production, production, production. I don't have this April. Okay, impression over. I hope that wasn't too bad for a first time. You just used my stuff and then pretended to do an impression. That's so stupid. Because, just do something original, dude. That's just so lame. And like, what's with all of the, the dust down there on your diorama, man? Like, let's just clean that up or something. Here, I'll help you. <laughs> <coughs> Jesus Christ. So since this is a pretty much completely original thing as the sculpt and everything goes, let's see how the articulation is on this thing. With well, the head obviously pops off kind of easy because there's just so much pushing on the sides of his face that it's just gonna knock that thing out of its socket. You can get some good spinning. You can get some, uh, yeah, that's, that's a bunch of it. That, that, that's, about, that's about it. <laughs> so a little bit of, oh my God. Let's try the other head. So you can get some movement in there. You just gotta like really kind of use it like it's in a bowl shape because that's exactly what's going on down there. The arms, let's see, we go out into a T pose. You can rotate at the biceps. He's got double jointed elbows, which uh, it helps, but he's still only getting like 90 degrees out of that because there's just so much in the way. Big pieces of plastic. That's it's a little awkward looking, the elbow. It's like, wouldn't you just scale this up the same way you would do another figure? This is weird. It seems like an odd design on the double jointed setup. Double jointed setup. <laughs> the arms will spin all around, no biggie deal. No biggie deals. Uh, you got the wrist, which will go to 90 degrees, pops off real easy. We'll just go with it. There you go, you gotta swap out hand, easy enough. And then you got this gigantic torso section going on, which has plenty of articulation, which is really gonna help his large size. It's, it's honestly more articulation than I would have expected out of something so big. And then the waist, which will spin all the way around, and it's just kind of a flat thing, so there's no, articulation otherwise than spinning, and then obviously this part. You got the legs, which will do their basic joint stuff, you know, those kind of ball joints. And then you got double jointed knees, which might help. So you can get some great range out of the legs, considering, again, his size, which is just gigantic. So the, nicely done on the leg. I do feel like the hip joints are gonna get pretty loose just because of the weight of the figure. It's not normally a case for a NECA item, but sometimes the big heavy ones like this, they do get loose from the weight of it. Had the same problem with the monster Raphael and Leonardo. They just were too heavy for their legs. Then you've got the standard rocker thingy at the ankles and uh, all that stuff. So, excellent job. This is very impressive articulation. Wow, I mean, if you need a big figure, you like big gigantic figures, this is an awesome one to go after. The paintwork, the detail, fantastic. I mean, not a lot going on in the sculpt, of course, because he's just kind of big shapes. But overall, I mean, this is just, it's a beautiful thing. $55, I mean, this is the same, this is like the same price as the blob. And just on weight alone, this guy clearly weighs more than the blob. And you're getting more stuff with NECA's item here. You get an extra head with both of them. You get extra hands with both of them, but he comes with the gun and the two extra heads for the other frogs, which I don't remember their name. It doesn't matter. We're not here for them. They can go bye-bye. We're here for Napoleon. This is incredible. They need to add this version as a figure or character in Shredder's Revenge. Now that would be sweet because they didn't do that, did they? They did, I don't remember it. <laughs> but this, he goes like crazy, he's like mad with something and Donatello has to save him. And I don't remember that from the episode, I remember that because I read the back of the box. That's right, this episode supports reading. <laughs> but yeah, the, these are big, heavy figures. This is substantially more weight in it, and way more detail, way more paint. And would you compare, would you, would you compare him to Napoleon? No, I'm so stupid. When you compare him to Rex One, that's who this is. This is Napoleon. I'm such an idiot. Is also still much heavier than this guy. He's a few extra bucks. If I remember with my brain, this was $50 for Rex One, and $55 for Napoleon. And I get it, this is more plastic, it's heavier. Even the shipping goes up. So they gotta count for that. This is a nice pairing of large figures. Good God, he really makes Rex One look tiny. 
That's incredible. Excellent job. So as I continue to gush and say good things about this thing, let's just jump into the posing segment. And then when that whole segment's done, that's the end of the video. So I'm gonna say goodbye now. It's getting real low. Apparently this is a set that a lot of people want. What is the deal behind these guys and are they worth the lower price of $54.99? Now that is interesting. These have been going for 60 bucks for the two packs, but it's only $54.99. Huh, I think, you know what? We're happy to save some money. So who cares? Let's open it up. Actually, I forgot. Before we open it up, we gotta look at everything. Because that's how you do it. You do a review, you gotta look at stuff. So look at artwork, artwork, stuff. You know, now the, the artwork has been coming from Viacom or Nickelodeon and then given to people, and then people like Travis Hasback will put it all together. Now, who's involved with the sculpting? All of these, oh look, thanks to Thomas. We are Tomas. We have the uh, April head. So I guess he's just kind of crushing it now in a new designer sculptor for NECA. Here's some stuff that came out last go around during the holothon. So uh, the, you can still find them on the shelves. As incredible as this guy is, I still see him. And these two, I definitely see. And if you want a nice little bio about who the heck these guys are, because you have no idea, you can't be a turtle fan and not know who these guys are. That would be weird, especially if you were gonna do a channel and like review them. Could you imagine a guy reviewing these things and <laughs> having no idea who they are? That would be awesome. So this, is about the turtles, so good luck. You're gonna have to get on the internet and read about them, or just Google the episode because they're real easy to find on the internet and you can watch them whenever you want, thanks to websites. <laughs> so these guys have the sewer version of the backdrop for whatever reason, I don't know, because maybe one of them's good and one's bad and that's how that happens is when they're like kind of torn. Usually bad guys get the Technodrome, good guys get not the Technodrome. I don't know, but good sign that there's soft goods besides the fact that you can clearly see that there's soft goods is a little packet of silica. Nice. I like when there's soft goods on an action figure. It really kind of bumps up the, the quality. Quality. That was weird the way it came out of my mouth. Let's get these guys out of the plastic and see what the heck is going on with them. All right, there we go. We got everything out of the plastic. Now, the... There's a... The, 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 the. Okay, so I... Definitely remember from my brain, I did not Google any of this stuff, but he's the villain in the episode and he's the good guy, but he also should come with the human head. Why doesn't he? I mean, his toes would be a little weird maybe in, in this, but like there is a human version. And then if you could just like pop these things off, which I think it really seems like you can, really close anyway. You're like, you're so close to just, and he doesn't have any accessories. I, I'm assuming that he doesn't have anything in the show, like a gun or anything, but look, his his extra hands, that's what he comes with. These are, this would hold a gun of some sort. I am very confused. But then you have the two gripping hands. Okay, cool. Also nothing really for him to grip. And then you got this guy, Electro Zapper, who has this chain, which was like essentially kryptonite to him, wraps him up in it. I don't know what the rock is. Is that the kryptonite where this comes from? Anyway, electro zapping powers, alternate head, all these extra hands, pointing, open hands, and gripping hands. Can someone explain that? This is a bad value. This is an excellent value. I'm so confused. I mean, it, don't necessarily need this hand, but maybe give him some like open hands, relaxed hands, or you know, like face palming somebody. <laughs> Let's look at all this stuff in a little bit uh, closer detail. So the chain, which looks pretty sweet, I imagine it glows in the dark. Cannot confirm nor deny just as of yet whether this glows in the dark, but it looks like it would. Then you have this rocky thing, which is uh, whatever. That's a drawer accessory or a Ziploc bag accessory, am I right? Then you have these extra pieces for this 
dude. What's going on here? This goes on top of a hand somewhere? Yes. Oh, this hand actually has a hole right there in that middle finger, which is where this is gonna go. That's pretty sweet. I really, really like that. It's nice to have effects. You know, sometimes there are characters, superheroes or villains, and they're known to have effects, like blast effects, some people would say. And when you make a figure and they don't come with those blast effects, it seems like, why did you make the figure, Hasbro? Hey, why did you make the figure, Hasbro? Hmm? Cyclops with no optic blasts? Get out of here. Look at this. Value is their thing, man. I'm telling you, NECA, it's just, it's just hard to beat. As much as I wanna find another company for the good price, Jada Toys is about the next on the list. Here we go with these little electro bombs or whatever, but they got holes in the bottom. So what are those holes gonna do? Is it just there for the mold sake or can you actually do something with them? I don't know. Stop asking me. Now, the other fist right here, another one you can just kind of line up and see that there is another opportunity here to have some incredible effects. This one doesn't feel as locked in and secure as the other one, but still, that is so cool. What an incredible way to introduce the power effects. Now, obviously not all character designs have these little rings or whatever, but this is fantastic. Genius, excellent job. Whoever came up with that, the people in the bottom of the box, one of them, who was it? Tell me, Brody, are you watching this? Who did this? That's genius. So you get some gripping hands, looking real nice as usual. Come on, you're not gonna, uh, I mean, it's a little sloppy, but that's nobody's fault. It's all done by hand, so it's somebody's fault. <laughs> it's obviously <laughs> someone's fault, but it's okay, no big deal. And then you got this nice flat, palmy, grippy thing, which is uh, much needed. And it's the same as the one that the blast effect works on. Does this work like this? Oh my God, is that what that's for? I should have watched the episode. I mean, I definitely watched the episode and that's why I know this is what you're supposed to do. He's got these. He's blowing little electro bubbles. That's pretty sweet. Look at this alternate head, extra villainous, great detail, excellent sculpting. I mean, just come on, these guys. It's so, it's kind of sad how good they are at their job. Now this one, another blast effect, which again goes on to the finger and is just like probably the coolest thing. Look at that detail. I love this. This is such a cool, man, I don't like the character. Like it's just not, I don't remember him and he's, you know, it's kind of goofy looking, but the concept and the design of doing all this, this is so genius. It makes me mad. <laughs> it's like, I'm so impressed that I'm like, Oh, almost offended at how good everybody is at their jobs. So here you go, let's look at the details of uh, Electro Zapper. So he's got all these batteries around on his belt, the icon of a battery symbol, his whole symbol thing is electric and batteries, electricity and batteries. But you know, back in the 80s and 90s, these batteries are gonna run out fast. So these have gotta be, you know, this is how you power up a boom box is with like eight of these things. So he's basically running on boom box energy. That's pretty sweet. Cloth goods, love it. Soft goods, cloth, cloth, clothy soft goods. Yeah, fantastic. Now, Bugman, oh yeah. So he's got his hands that are, are, are kind of worthless. If you're new to this channel and you've been enjoying what you're seeing here with the reviews and stuff, then I, I ask you to please watch the video where I did a game show style thing with Mad Hatter and Moscato Bot Collects. In 2020, the retail price was $149.99. What is it going for today? I'm gonna say $349. I'm gonna say if I can write. <laughs> oh, this looks horrible. Sorry, I need the curse. All right. $260. $260 versus $349. He's writing a story. Chapter one, Moscato Bot. <laughs> oh no. That is my favorite thing on this entire channel that I've made. I know it's a little long, but it is very entertaining all the way through. I promise you'll enjoy it. Give that a watch. It'll be in the description below. I'll do other stuff, tag it in comments or something. I don't know. Put it at the end of this video. That's what I'll do. <laughs> so stupid sometimes. Okay. Let's look at his, his details. Look at that hair. 
the alternate color work fantastic the eyeballs the mouth it's incredibly creepy looking <laughs> and i think more so than what the cartoon was because this is just so disturbing to think that somebody's face and mouth oh yeah it just gives me the willies to be honest i guess the reason why he doesn't have a whole lot of accessories to keep his value up is because his body is his accessory man what a disgusting <laughs> disgusting design he is so he's got these the uh, kind of bug extensions or whatever out of his shoulders. He's got the wings coming out of the back and this kind of uh, scorpion tail in a way. So I guess you could go in a few different poses with it. It doesn't have a whole lot of range to like come out from his body, but it's really just there to complete his look. So that's not a big articulation piece. The wings have some swivel and some uh, other directions. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the arms are obviously going to have some problems with articulation too because these, like, whatever, insect legs are going to get into the way of his shoulder pads. But these aren't guys you're really buying, I think, for articulation. These are just completing your set, right? However, he's still got a lot of articulation, all things considered, so the arms double jointed. We got standard wrists and stuff, so let's see, what does that look like? Pretty fantastic uh, in, in that sense. And he's got an ab crunch that works really well. The neck and head. So he gets some really good range. So if you want him flying, look, he's got the right angle, which is really important for a flying character. You, they have to be able to look straight up. So excellent job on that. You really took the time to consider that. Make sure that the neck and head had the right appropriate articulation and crazy leg articulation, no problems there. Feels a little bit looser than normal with a NECA item, but I think it's gonna be fine. And then his articulation is pretty standard. So nothing too wild. He does basically what you would need him to. Got ab crunch, technically, but it's all underneath this like soft rubbery thing. So that's not a solid mold. So thank you guys for doing that and actually giving some articulation, even though you didn't ruin the sculpt by having a big line under there. The knees double jointed, huge feet. Great articulation all the way through. This is fantastic. Yeah, I don't, when was the last time I didn't like a NECA item? That was probably the Shredder, which is an older item, and I just was kind of like, man, eh, not really worth it. These are fantastic. Good job, boys and girls of the NECA team and the contractors that got hired to do it, like Tomas and most of them probably, right? So while I am very much impressed with these, of course, I mean, they did such an excellent job. So anybody that's watching, thank you. If you're not one of them, but you know them, tell them I said thank you. And tell them to watch this video because uh, I need somebody at NECA to be like, hey, let's send some stuff to this guy. People seem to like him. You know? So there we go. I'm going to say that uh, if you like these characters at all, definitely worth the lower than expected price of $54.99. That's nuts. It's still nuts to me. Okay, so now we get into the posing segment. And then after that, I'll be gone because that's the end of it. I'm saying this. Yeah, anyway, bye. <laughs>